Welcome to your sanity safe space with your favorite YouTube podcast duo. Skag three, whoever he is. Get your plug fascist ass out of here! Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. You are a terrific team on all counts. Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement, this is, is the Matt and Blonde Show. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international over to prove. <laughs> Hey, why the fuck is the gas so hot, bitch? There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. Oh my God, bro! But that's disgusting. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that fair? I hope it is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking own, bitch! What I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Okay? Okay. You are fake news. I agree with that. Very fake news. Well, it's not my concern. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. That's a big game, man. It's not against the law. Oh, fuck you. All right, America, go to the YouTube right now. Big ups to Rebecca for keeping Matt woke. Congratulations <laughs> to both of you. You're awesome. In five, four, three. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Do it live! I, I'll write it and we'll do it live! <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live! Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the very best you can ask anyone about that. People often do. This is the Matt and Blonde Show. My name is Matt Christensen. I am flanked on my right. <coughs> Damn it, I thought I'd get through one show intro without having to clear. Unbelievable. Flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hi. Well, even if I can't get through the intro without having to clear my throat, another week and we're still not dead. So all things considered, I'd say that's a a success. Not by DVT. Dude, my friends, my family, it's like this is the longest run sickness I, I maybe have ever had in my life. I've heard from a a lot of people locally and friends I have across the country who are also sick. There's something it's like, this is what they said COVID was going to be like. That's. Oh, COVID was as, was as bad as this for me. I don't know. I think it's way worse. It just won't end. Yeah. Hangs on forever. Whatever this mysterious China virus uh, two going around is, it's uh, very persistent. Yeah. Uh, Funny story about this mystery disease. Now, of course, my wife has it because I had it. I mentioned last week that it got into my eyes a little bit. My eyes turned pink. Yeah. My experience with pink eye, if that's what it was, was apparently a mild case because now that my wife has it, it turned one of her eyes entirely blood red. And even me a picture. It was disgusting, even by my standards. It bruised either through the infection or through the sheer violence of the coughing. It bruised her eye area such that it looks like she has a black eye. And so now I face the prospect of having to go to the hospital for the birth of my second son and being in the delivery room faced with a question or a dilemma. Am I going to say nothing while everyone looks at me with skepticism or am I going to say explicitly, no, I did not beat my wife. It was a mystery virus. She fell down the stairs because of it. I just jizzed in her eye and then I slapped her. I mean, just kidding. She fell on the stairs. <laughs> a reminder, okay. my parents watch this show. Oh, right. Yeah. It's too late for them. We've already corrupted them. I just By we, I mean me. This thing is so bad, it looks like I beat my wife. That's that's how ridiculous it is. Yeah, but what did she say? <laughs> what was she wearing? What, she, what was she wearing? What did she do to deserve this? For real, that picture was shocking. I feel so bad for her. I can't. So I'm 33 weeks pregnant. I cannot imagine giving birth today. It would be a fucking disaster. Yeah. I mean, in, in both of these <clears throat> situations, you're just hoping to, you're a little bit, uh, a little bit behind, obviously. So in your case, more likely that you get over it, but yeah, we're just trying to buy some time, hoping that she doesn't have to be 
incredibly diseased while uh, giving birth to our son. And uh, in case anyone is is curious, yeah, we had the the baby's heartbeat checked and all that. So the baby is fine and healthy. There's no there's no worry there. Oh, yeah. It's just the the sheer discomfort. He's in there totally unaffected. Mom is sick as shit. That's how it goes, yeah. which is great. But you know. So uh, anyway, the news stops for nobody. Of course, this week there was plenty of it. Embattled Republican Congressman George Santos is officially booted. He is now formally expelled from the House as of Friday. We'll examine all of it, his lies, his crimes, and I think the actual principles at stake in the decision. Uh, Plus, we have more information on the Derek Chauvin prison stabbing. Turns out the guy who stabbed him was, at least once upon a time, an FBI informant, which has nothing to do with the stabbing at all. Twice, for two different cases. Oh, for two different cases. Now, that's a very interesting piece of information. I'm trying to check myself by asking the question, who in federal prison isn't an FBI informant? They're they're probably more common than than not. You know, you know, this homeboy was like about to get out. That's the other thing that makes no sense. And he supposedly did it to on, on behalf of Black Lives Matter. He's like a Mexican gang member. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Jesse Smollett loses his appeal in an Illinois in the Illinois court system. Uh, he plans to appeal to the Illinois State Supreme Court. But for now, it looks very likely that Jesse is going back to jail. Plus, we have. Uh, yes. He's going back to jail. Well, he might. I mean, pending a successful appeal or intervention by the state Supreme Court. He's not. The state Supreme Court's not, not going to do F all. But he only has to go back for 144 days. 150, I thought. But he served six days. Yeah, but I thought the sentence was like 156 or something. Whatever. Oh. Doesn't matter. We know what's going on. A lot of days. Half a year. You might be right. I don't know. I didn't I didn't look at the numbers uh, that closely. We'll uh, We'll check it when we get there. Plus, we have plenty of other hoax hate, and tonight's movie review is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So stick around. We get to evaluate if our younger selves were right in liking this movie long, long ago or not. We'll catch up with your Super Chats in between topics 10 bucks and up on the Sunday show because we are no good low-down money grabbers. It will be all this and more on your favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show-related and support the show for as little as a buck a month over on the website. That is mattchristensenmedia.com. Listener support is hugely appreciated, and it is what keeps the show operational. So if you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the show. We also have show merchandise for sale on the site as well. Plus, we have offers from friendly listener-owned businesses This week's feature business is a brand new one, and it comes with a very exciting giveaway opportunity for listeners. So stand by for that. But this week's feature business is our friends at Hope Innovations. Have you ever wanted to grow your own garden, but you didn't feel like you had the space? With food prices rising uh, rising and chemicals being added to our food every day, you might consider adding a hydroponic garden system to your home. Grow clean and fresh produce all year round with the Eden Tower from Hope Innovations. When it comes to growing your own food, invest in the best system out there and discover the joy of regularly having freshly harvested salads, homegrown herbs, tomatoes, peppers, and more with your very own hydroponic system engineered to be elegant and practical. The Eden Tower stands above the competition with its patented cup system that allows you to drop a seed and go You do not need a green thumb to easily grow delicious and nutritious food. In fact, Blonde has personal experience with this kit over, what, the last year or so? Yeah. um, So as soon as we, this has been in the works for a while. And as soon as this came up as an an opportunity, I was like, send me that shit. And then I put it together and it was so satisfying. Like like within a week, things had started growing. And uh, a week. And it wasn't, uh, it's not hard to use. You don't need any special skill or. Mm -mm. Some nope. fancy gardening um, ability. No, it was especially good for herbs and lettuce. Um, and I, uh, my yard is not full sun. So I have a really hard time uh, growing things in my yard. So this was just like the perfect solution uh, for that problem. And then you can also, um, my friend told me that she was able to transplant uh, a bunch of her seeds that she started. Um, and incubated in the Eden Tower, and then she was able to transplant mm. them successfully outside. That's so it's cool. also really good for that in the winter. Yeah, that's an opportunity as well. 
You can get 200 bucks off an Eden Tower hydroponics kit from Hope Innovations through a listener exclusive link available only on my website. Head on over to mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals. Find the Hope Innovation section and click the link for 200 bucks off an Eden Tower hydroponics kit. And get started growing your own food easily and simply today. Find everything you need from our friends at Hope Innovations plus other great offers from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses like Hero Soap Company, Western Razor Company, Kenny O Mountain Woodsmithing, and more. That's at mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals. Deals by listeners for listeners. Now, what is this exciting new opportunity for listeners related to Hope Innovations? Well, uh, all throughout December, I wrote September in here. What the... My brain is destroyed. <laughs> all, throughout, all throughout December. It's going to be a great show. The most clever and funniest super chats that we receive will be entered into a random drawing to receive a free Eden Tower hydroponics kit courtesy of Hope Innovations. That is over a thousand dollar value, which can be yours simply because you made the best or perhaps the trashiest or perhaps the grossest joke in the super chat. This is called the Tower of Babel sweepstakes. See, Eden Tower you get rewarded for your Babel Tower of Babel. It's biblical. It's clever, right? If you think, <laughs> well, not not really, actually, then you just might have the cleverness necessary to win. So each Sunday stream in December, Blonde and I will acknowledge what we think are the funniest chats as they come in with this unique sounder. <laughs> oh, my God, that is funny. If you get that sounder. On your super chat, that means you are eligible for a random drawing at the end of the month to win the hydroponics kit. And yes, each chat selected is one entry. So the more clever chats you send, the more entries that you get. There's only one slight catch here due to the limitations of YouTube and Rumble and the other places in which we take super chats. And by the way, all the places that we take super chats are eligible for the sweepstakes. I don't have a way to contact the actual super chatter directly. So if you would like to win the kit, let's say you send in a super chat, you get the, uh, oh my God, that is funny sound bite. You have to tell us who you are. What you got to do is go to the URL on your screen, mattis.gay slash giveaway. Or, you know, if you like the formal URL, mattchristensenmedia.com slash giveaway. But mattis.gay slash giveaway. There's a brief form on there that just allows you to say, hey, this is my uh, chat username. This is an email at which an email address at which you can contact me. And you have my personal promise, Scout's Honor. I'm not going to share your email address with any third party. I won't do that. I just need it because there is no way to contact you otherwise if you win. So, Tower of Babel giveaway active all through December. And then we'll draw a winner in the new year. Head on over to the Tower of Babel giveaway page on my website for all the information and to submit your email contact if your chat is selected. Mattis.ga slash giveaway. Oh, excuse me. We also had the uh, Australia listener Christmas party this week. Oh, it was so fun. And they do this annually. If you guys don't know, each year, this group of Australian listeners from really all over the country, they're not even localized to one particular city. They're from all over, but they gather to rent out a house and have a fun time for the Christmas season. Do I can't remember what city they actually said they were in. I don't remember this time. Do you remember? Uh, somewhere fun something racist (laughs) i I know they were planning on visiting sites with racist names i do remember that (laughs) but anyway we joined the party on friday we had a good chat with them of course it is very cool to see so many friendships forged through the show so we extend our gratitude and a merry christmas to the listeners in australia and if you would like to meet fellow listeners in your area or i guess in your country in the case of australia you can check out the community page of the website, mattchristiansandmedia.com slash community for information on how to do that. And last piece, uh, last little announcement here, even though it's sort of ironic to mention it here, considering I've gone on and on with new aspects of the show here. But as I mentioned, with the uh, with my second son due any day, and of course, Blonde potentially due anytime soon uh, or you know, anytime now as well, uh. I am... Uh, a little bit wary about getting too ambitious with pushing the stream toward three hours, doing all that. What are we going to do with the, if I have either of us go into labor? That's why I'm just being a little cautious. So I don't want to, I don't want to put in hours and hours and hours of work on Sunday and then get sniped and I, and the show's, the show is canceled. So of course we're going to still keep producing the show with, uh, with full and appropriate force. But I think the show is going to be a little bit shorter just for the next month or so. 
making sure that we don't overextend ourselves and then uh, get caught in surprise labor on say like Sunday at uh, 3 p.m. You know, oh uh, so if you notice We're the show have babies, if you notice the show runtime getting a little shorter than maybe it used to otherwise, that's why. But don't worry, we'll uh, we'll be back at it as soon as these babies are born. And we appreciate your patience and consideration in the meantime. Anyway, let's get to the news. This um, Elon Musk telling boycotting advertisers to go fuck themselves. Already kind of old news. I got to talk about it, number one, because you and I haven't talked about it. Number two, unfortunately, on my Wednesday show, I I had it at the end of the show after an interview. And the connection, the stream connection just dropped out. And that segment got cut out of the end of the stream, which sucks. Because I actually did have a lot to say about it. uh, And I lost about eight minutes of content on that. Uh, and, and number three, uh, I and we have said a lot of stuff about Elon Musk. I think we've criticized him strongly since his acquisition of Twitter. S- criticisms I stand by. I'm not backing off of them. But I think in the interest of fairness, when the guy does good things, he's owed that acknowledgement too. And I don't know about you, but I think this was quite a good thing. I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, on Wednesday, Musk was interviewed on stage at the Deal Book Conference in New York City by Andrew Ross Sorkin of the New York Times Sorkin brought up the ongoing advertiser boycott on Twitter. And Elon Musk says those advertisers that think they can control him with money can go fuck themselves. And he later added that he doesn't care about looking good like so many uh, in public life do or so many in corporate life. He says these people are often so concerned about looking good while they do evil, actually. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope they stop. You hope... Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. Perfect awkwardness. But go fuck yourself. Is that clear? Yeah. I, uh, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. What, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Okay? I appreciate that he went to this buttoned up press conference or whatever this was. And then was like, right before he rolls out the door, he's like, I am going to smoke the fattest joint. And then I'm going to microdose. And then I'm going to tell all of my advertisers to go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like, catch the joint part. Well, that may, I, oh, I, I he seems... He seems stony, which is fine. I oh, mean, you're just speculating. I thought he actually smoked it. Oh no, I'm sure yeah. I'm. He smokes uh, copious amounts of weed. That is, that is. I guess I've no. seen the the Rogan episode and the meme. Yeah, it's nice to get one every once in a while. And like the the thing that bothered me about this though is is everybody's reaction. Like people were like, "Oh, well, I never." It's like you people want to cut off kids' dicks and like <laughs> you're going to be all appalled. I think that when somebody tells them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, I think that's like, what he's talking on. about. It's like this yeah. weird selective outrage. You do objectively horribly evil things while you pretend yeah. to be outraged about things that aren't evil or don't matter or even if they were bad are comparatively small to the things that you're mad about. Yeah. God, now, he's just the embodiment of weaponized autism. <laughs> Now, really I, I appreciated this because I think it's correct both philosophically and correct as a business practice. Now, philosophically, of course, we all have freedom of association. These advertisers do, too. I'm not saying these advertisers are somehow compelled to pay Twitter for ads or something. But many of them are making a big public show about their separation from Twitter. They aren't just leaving silently. They're making public statements about why they're leaving What is that? That is an effort to influence the associations of others, which is an effort to control what is or is not acceptable speech. And when people try to exert control of other speech in that way, they should be mocked. They should be ridiculed because they don't respect your basic rights. Now, the counter to that would be, well, what kind of business philosophy is that? The customer is always right, don't you know? In this case, the advertiser being a customer of sorts. Well, uh, no, actually, that's a bunch of bullshit. Because advertisers dictating content is backward. Mm -hmm. Do advertisers try to go to the NFL and and influence the rules of the Super Bowl? No, because the NFL says this is the Super Bowl and everyone watches the Super Bowl. So do you want an ad or not? 
Because if yeah. you don't, we got like 50 other companies behind you that do. The point is that chasing advertiser whims is not how you build a successful business. You build a successful business by making it so great that it holds the eyes and the advertisers have no exactly. choice but to come there because that's where all the eyes are. In other words, advertisers follow crowds. Advertisers don't build crowds themselves. So allowing them control grants the premise that they bring people to the platform. They don't do that. But if you think like, oh man, at Disney, we all got to follow Disney's business model. Cause of course, when he's talking about Bob and Bob Iger, there, he's talking about the CEO of Disney, who was also present at this event. I'm not sure if he was in the room at the time, but he spoke at the event. The reason Bob Iger is even the CEO of Disney at all is because the company has sucked so bad in recent <laughs> years. Yeah. In August, it was reported that Disney Plus lost almost 12 million subscribers in the second quarter of this year. That's something like 10% of their total subscription base. Aren't they merging with who? I thought they were already a, one big company. I don't know. I don't know what they own, but it's a lot of stuff. The company's stock value is down over 50% in the last two and a half years. So what exactly is it about Disney that leads anybody to believe we should follow their philosophy to prosperity? Exactly. Their company performance doesn't show it. Disney should go fuck themselves. And he's 100% right about that. Yeah. Totally. So good for Elon Musk. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope to see more. Do you have anything more to say about that? No, I, I mean, this is what the what we need in terms of morale. Every time something like this happens, it gives everybody a little boost, you know? I definitely did not expect that one. And uh, I just, <clears throat> you mentioned the pearl clutching, but it's just, it's like that perfect entertaining awkwardness where the crowd is just where kinda, everyone's like, everyone's looking around like, should I laugh? Should I react? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. it's, it was uh, just a wildly entertaining clip. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go through the entirety of Thursday night's debate between California Governor Gavin Newsom and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, that was on Fox, partly because Fox News made it impossible to watch unless you have a cable subscription. And I'm not inclined right. to reward that kind of nonsense. In fact, it pissed me <laughs> off greatly because I, yeah. I was trying to find it and it's like, well, impossible. All right, guess I'll do other stuff. But I have seen the major hi uh, highlights. And, and to be honest, what I've seen was kind of boring, except for... DeSantis bringing up the shit map of San Francisco and Gavin Newsom not having a, a, a lie even prepared <laughs> to address it. That was pretty funny. And yeah, it is real. Interestingly, in the, the Sacramento Bee here, they fact check it. Hey, is that um, is that poop map real? Uh, yeah, they acknowledge that the plot points that are on the map are, in fact, a collection of user generated reports of public poop between 2011 and 2019. So that's that's the caveat on the fact check. But it's not a current collection of data, but a historical one. I'm sure the problem has greatly improved. I'm sure they've cleaned yeah, up really? all that brown in the meantime. Uh, but there was one part of the debate that just lets you know how blatantly biased the supposed fact checkers actually are, in case you had any doubt. But as you'd expect, the um, the question came up during the debate Hey, why even have this debate at all? Isn't mm -hmm. the debate really settled by more Californians moving to Florida than Floridians moving to California? And to counter that point, Gavin Newsom just flat out lied. It wasn't like he dodged the question or he reframed it or he deflected. He just flat out said, no, actually, you have it backwards. The opposite is true. Everyone's moving from Florida to California. Can you explain this migration out of California and going to red state? You mean, state, you mean blue state? Well, hold on. You, you mean the, the, the last two years, more Floridians going to California than Californians going to Florida? No, I, I put up on, I put up on the screen. By the way, that's going to be fun to fact check. So we'll just start right there. California has no peers. Uh, California dominates. Okay. So how is this remotely defensible, uh, defensible? This claim, for one, defies the data. Uh, this is the San Francisco Chronicle with the numbers between 2021 and 2022, about 51,000 Californians moved to Florida. At the same time, about 29,000 Floridians moved to California. Now, we are both college-educated mathematicians. Last I checked, 51,000 is a bigger number. It than is. Than 29,000. And wouldn't you have to take into account population density? for this to be fair. Well, we're going to take into account population and make it per capita. That's the, 
which, you know, normally is not a methodological problem, but it's it's sort of an odd thing to do in this context. And it also is in defiance of the way the claim was made for the fact check. And you're also talking about fluctuating populations. Yeah. Like this is within the context of fluctuating populations. There's a whole bunch of other data here, too. In 2021 and 2022, Florida gained about 450,000 residents. California lost about 750,000. So not just migration between this two, the two states, but overall, Florida is one of the most growing states. California is one of the most shrinking states right uh, yeah. as a percentage california or uh, sorry florida gained um 1.91 percent in population last year that's actually the biggest population gain by percentage of any state california lost 0.3 percent uh, and the biggest losers of population last year to the broad point about fleeing blue states well they're really the biggest or the bluest states new york lost just under one percent illinois also just under one percent Biggest Wait, winners. you're telling me even with immigration that California's uh, population remains static? Yeah, that would be the uh, the big question mark. How are the illegals counted or are they not? I don't know. Yeah, without that information, this this I, I, none of this means anything. It could be a lot of mud. You're right. Uh, but assuming we believe the data or there's some truth to them here, the biggest or the, the most growing states, if you don't count illegal immigration, I guess, uh, red states, Florida, as mentioned, mm-hmm. Idaho. South Carolina, Texas, South Dakota, Montana. So how is it that Gavin is plausibly making this claim that everyone's moving to California actually? Well, you just have to look to his ridiculous sycophants over at um, at PolitiFact. Because during the debate, PolitiFact tweeted out its analysis back from June. Well, actually, Gavin yeah. is right. And how is he right? Well, per capita... More Floridians have moved to California than the other way around. So, yes, more Californians have moved to Florida. They're granting that point. That, but that's that's only because California is a bigger state in terms of population. So as a percentage of residents, it's actually more Floridians going to California. That's their point. But in this case, shouldn't it be per capita for the receiving state? Well, they're saying, oh, oh yeah, they're measuring per capita uh, per capita in the state that you left, not the state that That's you're going bullshit. to. No, yeah. if you're going to do it per capita, shouldn't it be in the state receiving? Uh, I, I don't know why the per capita measure is relevant in in any case. Actually, in this, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it would matter at all in this instance. Some things to keep in mind here. Uh, and when I say that, there's the methodological question just on its own. But the claim in the debate was just, hey, which state is having more people move to the other state? It was not a per yeah. capita claim. It's just what's the number. Right. And then PolitiFact is going to come back with this fact check back from June. Now, in fairness, when Newsom said this originally on Hannity's show in June, he did say per capita. During the debate, they didn't say per capita. So they've just inserted this per capita measure to cover for him now. Number two, I, I just think that per capita is a, is a nonsense way to measure migration. When 10,000 people cross the U.S. border a day, do we say, well, actually, that's kind of nothing because that's only 100 per 100,000 Hondurans coming here or that's only one right. illegal immigrant for every uh, for every um, this math can't be right. Whatever one. <laughs> I did some math here. There's not one illegal immigrant for every three American. That, maybe that's well, whatever. Let's say that was the case. You don't measure illegal immigrants per American and decide whether that's a problem or not. Yeah, we just measure how many people are coming or going. And number three, even by this per capita measurement, the numbers are very close to even. You dig into PolitiFact's fact check. According to calculations from Newsom's team, it's nice of PolitiFact just to regurgitate Newsom's calculations, but let's assume they're correct on a per capita basis. Close to 90 out of 100,000 Californians moved to Florida in 2021, compared with nearly 123 per 100,000 Floridians who moved to California. Those are very close numbers. So it's not like there's some drastic difference that he's referencing anyway. Lastly, number four, you know, it's a nonsense measurement because if the reverse was true and more Floridians actually were moving to California, is there any chance they would measure it per capita? No, they would just use the raw number and they'd say, well, Floridians are going to California. It's a measurement chosen specifically and only to get the answer that they want, not for any methodological integrity so once again never underestimate the the uh, eagerness of these people to lie on behalf of their political preferences the title of fact check means nothing it actually means the opposite i'm so disappointed i expected more from these people 
Yeah. And then, well, it's not even a new fact check. It's just one they had in their back pocket ready to go to cover for Gavin. Oh, I, I expected nothing. I mean, my expectations could not be lower. I just couldn't. Well, uh, I'd like to think my expectations couldn't be lower for federal bureaucrats, yet sometime, sometimes they still impress. And, you know, another case of getting it completely wrong for ideological purposes. There may be no quote from former President Ronald Reagan more memorable than what he said during a 1986 press conference. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Here's the uh, original statement. I think you all know that I've always felt the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Well, Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona was speaking at the... the, Everyone knows this. Not Miguel. He was speaking at the Western Governors Association in Jackson, Wyoming on Monday. And speaking about how the federal government has all sorts of help available to the states, Cardona channeled Reagan to say the opposite of what the quote actually means. Count on us. We're from the government and we're here to help. We're going to set up follow-up calls with every governor we met with to make sure we're available. Um, as uh, I think it was President Reagan said, we're from the government. We're here to help. Um, there's, there are resources there. There's technical assistance there. And there's a playbook that could support the work you're doing. Count on us as a partner in this. Our students are waiting. Okay. Okay, bro. It's like, I totally understand your culture, man. Oh, that's not fair. I think his accent is very well adjusted. Uh huh. He's assimilated on that basis quite well. Yes, he's assimilated excellently. (laughs) Uh, Remember, this isn't just any federal bureaucrat. This is the federal bureaucrat in charge of what? Educating your kids. Right. Never mind that he doesn't understand history or philosophy. Now, of course, Reagan himself advocated for the abolition of Cardona's job. By virtue of the abolition of the Department of Education in 1981, Reagan said about the Department of Education, which his predecessor, Jimmy Carter, had created, quote, by eliminating the Department of Education less than two years after it was created, we can not only reduce the budget, but ensure that local needs and preferences rather than the wishes of Washington determine the education of our children. Regrettably, Reagan did not do that. And so Cardona still has a job uh, from which to get it all wrong. And hey, lastly, before we get to the George Santos stuff, I like to chronicle these stories because the fact checks insist to me that there is no trend of either actual or would be transgender mass shooters. And uh, I'm not saying that there is for sure. I'm just saying that like in the last year or so, I've seen a lot of, and when I say a lot, I mean per capita, Gavin, (laughs) just saying not a lot of transgender people and like kind of a lot of transgender shooters or people threatening to shoot up places. I'm not saying uh, it's more than evil white men on a per capita basis or not. I don't know. I just, I think there's a something for statistical investigation here and they tell me there's nothing there, but there's yet another example this week. Yeah. Can you believe this tranny's last name is Willie? What is it? It's Willie. Willie. Yeah. You, you can't be. That is the face of a Willie, if I've ever seen one, yeah. Alexia Willie is sh- the shaman's name now, but previously Jason Lee Willie. So, like, actually his last name. Oh, it's not even maybe a change is, thing. It's, no, yeah. maybe this is all some weird Freudian thing where he just had to cope with his last name. But arrested on August 14th in Illinois. After this live stream where I could not believe what he was saying. I'll read some of it, but like some of it, I, I was like, I can't repeat this on the show. Okay. What? He Is said, that bad? Oh, it's so bad. A person in Tennessee walked into one of your schools and shot up a bunch of your Christian daughters. That's not the last of them. If you don't shut your fucking mouth, shut the fuck up. Do you understand me? There's a lot of trannies out here that are he tired of trannies? being picked on. He said transgender. Oh. Uh, they're tired of being picked on and we're going to the schools and we're going to kill their fucking children out here. And that's the end of it. We're at war. But he also said oh like, Oh my God, bro the tip of the iceberg he also said like i'm gonna go into little girls bathrooms and like rape their peas and i'm gonna give them hiv and like i can't wait to rape all of your your like little girls and it was terrifying fuck around and find out terrible terrible so initially um they couldn't really do anything about this because he made no specific threats like come on Come on. But so he didn't, as it he didn't threaten out, specific girls. He just like all or specific all schools, y'all's yeah. little girls. Okay. Yes. But because of some 
I don't know, ordinance change or something. He's been charged with 14 felony counts of interstate communication of a threat to injure. The feds got and, him, actually. Yes. Okay. And he was arrested and is currently in the custody of U.S. Marshals. But, um, you know, uh, mental illness is associated with at least certain men- mental illnesses. There's a long history of uh, various mental illnesses being associated with um, different types of violence, domestic violence and you know, narcissistic personality disorders associated with domestic violence. Like I, I fail to see why, why we can't make any of these associations about this obvious mental illness being associated with violence. Well, when you live your life in denial of reality, the confrontations with reality will be harsh. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't know why we would be surprised for some of those to be violent in, in their reaction. Yeah. I don't know. It makes it difficult to feel sorry for these people because like in my heart of hearts, I, I, feel bad for transgender people because they're living a lie, uh, like the most fundamental lie, right? Uh, who you are as a, as a man or as a woman. And uh, like what you said, you know, if, if, if you're living a life that runs contrary to, to your biological imperative, there are going to be serious implications, moral and otherwise. Yeah. But stuff like this just makes me think like, we're not compatible with you people and you should be eliminated. I get real... <laughs> defensively it's like like zero to eugenics with me um Uh, that wouldn't be the first time about this yeah i know but but like the the the, uh, other trans shooter she wasn't a a sexual predator in this way the uh these you talking about the nashville one yeah yeah it's these it's these late to life male to female trannies and this was always the concern on the christian right everybody's like oh you're afraid they're gonna go into the bathrooms and this old male tranny is like, I'm going to rape underage girls in bathrooms. And everybody's like, uh, I guess there's nothing we can do. Yeah. But not all. (laughs) Yeah. Not all. Like, uh, what am I supposed to do here? Just many. I don't know. I mean, how much grace should we afford these people? No, I think, I think you're exactly right. I mean, it's easy for people to critique this as like, Oh, it's just hateful of the lifestyle. It's like, it, no, it's a recognition that the lifestyle is in denial of reality. When you live in denial of reality, you're going to, have some negative outcomes. Those negative outcomes might be uh, acted upon against other people. I want all of these people who think they're transgender to come to truth and to live happy, healthy, successful lives for their own, for their own sake. And also, so they are not a threat to my children or a threat to me. I'm not hoping bad yeah. things happen to them. I hope good things happen to them. And the first good thing that could happen would be an acknowledgement that you are what your biology says you are. You are what God made you. And it's as simple as that. Do you follow my, um, explosively popular Twitter account blondes <laughs> underscore tweets right about to be banned again. No, I, I, I don't, I don't know what's been going on this week of my, my tweets have been going crazy viral, but I saw this clip of um, Mr. Rogers that you may have seen going around recently where he's just like, he's like folding paper or whatever. And he's just talking about how boys are born boys and they're always boys and girls are born, born girls and they're always girls Yeah, and how only girls can be mommies. And it was just, it was like a, I, I could not stop sobbing. Like I was watching this and I was just crying, crying. And I couldn't figure out why I. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I couldn't figure out why I was so emotional. And it's you because, had me until um, the crying. Well, I, I, I'm pregnant, so I'm yeah. insane. But also uh, children used to grow up and they had these like simple parameters that they could, they could live within. Their lives were so much easier and now I have to deal with all this like pedo tranny stuff all the time. It's like, what kind of world are we handing over to our kids? Uh, yeah, we're handing so over sad. a world of confusion in which they'll grow up to realize their life has been a lie. And that lie was facilitated by their parents in many cases. And then, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of GoFundMes to take care of kids who exacted revenge upon their parents, as you've predicted. Yeah, the Desmonds of the world. Um, Yeah, but it does make me really sad because this type of tranny does need to be dealt with differently than your younger tranny that's been indoctrinated by their idiot leftist parents. Hmm. I assume like, you mean this guy more needs harshly. To face the wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, it, this guy needs no cable TV in prison. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty. Yeah. This guy needs uh, to stay in the ward with Derek Chauvin and the Mexican. Yeah. Seriously. Guy. I'm pretty sure this guy would not do well in prison. I still have some faith in prisoners. That's they, why he's going to women's him. prison. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> he might get killed in women's prison though. Yeah, really. Anyway, 
Uh, I wonder if George Santos is going to prison because it seems like he might. <laughs> now, I have a lot of conflicting thoughts about this, as we'll get to, because on the one hand, I have absolutely zero not just love. I have zero appreciation for George Santos at all. Mm. In fact, he repulses me. He's everything that DC shouldn't be like a guy with no talent who lied a bunch to go to DC to get literally fat off the fraudulent money extracted from others. The guy is an obese leech and just the sight of him enrages me because of that. However, That's everybody in Congress. Yeah, there are a lot of obese leeches in Congress. And so, mm -hmm. When he makes the point that he's not an especially unique obese leech, uh, there are points to that that if I'm not sympathetic with, I understand that maybe Congress's reaction in this case is not the wisest, not just on the political matters of like, who do you want controlling Congress, Republicans or Democrats, but on the, the matters of principle about who should be deciding who goes to Congress or not. But I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, of course, as expected, the headline is uh, it happened Friday. The House of Representative uh, House of Representatives voted to expel embattled New York Congressman George Santos. So as is tradition, of course, we will remember George Santos. Not Jewish. I, I never claimed to be Jewish. You claim to be Jewish, half Jewish, a proud American Jew, a Latino Jew, and a non-observant Jew. They're all direct quotes from you. I would always say, I'm, I was raised Catholic, but I come from a Jewish family, so that makes me Jew-ish. I get emotional. My parents were both down there uh, the day of the attacks. Immigration records show that Santos's mother was not even in the U.S. when 9-11 happened. Actually, studies point that most people lie on their resumes. It's just, unfortunately, it's it's the reality. Yeah, but you lied about everything. Well, not true. <laughs> I also lie him. about my lies. No, whatever. No, no. Uh, I, I appreciate this defense, too, or really I don't, but this defense that, uh, well, you know, other people do it, too. As I mentioned, yeah. there, you know, there are a lot of bad people in Congress, but that's not how we determine morality. Lots of people steal. Does that make stealing right? No, yes. of course not. Uh, um, oh, wait, no, no. I got confused. <laughs> now, I, I will take his point that there are a lot of scumbags in Congress. He might not even be a top 20 scumbag in Congress. We'll get to that. Yeah. I'm just saying that many people do it. it. It does not. That's not a moral standard. Doesn't make your action right. In fact, in this age of degeneracy, many people do it might be the greatest indicator that it's wrong. In fact. <laughs> yeah, really? But, uh, oh, I had you check because I was curious. That last image that I put in the montage there. Legit. Uh, an alleged image of George Santos as a drag performer. And I didn't know if it was legit or not, but you're telling me, yeah, uh, that was basically confirmed. He was he was yeah. known to dress in drag in Brazil or something. Yeah, I don't know why I'm sympathetic to this guy. Maybe because it's like, I feel like everybody in Congress is a piece of shit and we just know that he's a piece of shit. He. <laughs> somehow he's the most honest one yeah because really, he admitted to some accident, of those cause, lies well because he got caught way after accident. the fact yeah uh okay so as far as the vote here the final tally was 311 members in favor 114 opposed 105 republicans voted with almost all democrats to expel remember a vote to expel a member requires a two-thirds vote in the house so 291 or so votes was the threshold they cleared it by about 20 uh, this is just the third time the House has voted to expel a member since the Civil War. This, <laughs> so very rare. Yeah, th this was the third attempt at expelling Santos personally. But this was the first attempt since the House Ethics Committee released a report finding San uh, substantial evidence that Santos uh, has broken federal criminal laws. Now, in general, the report from the ethics committee found that Santos regularly used campaign funds for personal expenses. So this is the heart of the criminal matter. The rest of the stuff like, uh, did I say I was Jewish or not? Or did I say like, I, you know, my mom was down at the twin towers on nine 11. That stuff was, those were lies in his campaign. They're not necessarily criminal. The criminal matter is his management of campaign funds. And it appears, or at least the allegation is that he used campaign funds on personal things like trips to casinos designer fashion clothes, cosmetic treatments, and even purchases on OnlyFans. Oh, he's also Who's accused only fan. I <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one would like to know, or maybe one would not like to know, but 
He's also accused of stealing donors credit card information and charging donor cards without authorization. So not just a theft in the form of fraud, like I take your money under one premise or for one purpose and then I spend it on something else. Some of the accusations are that he just outright stole money. Like mm-hmm. I have donors credit card information on file. I, I press the button to charge that card without actually having authorization to do that and that sort of stuff. So Santos was already facing 23 uh, felony counts from the Justice Department. This on top of numerous lies that Santos had told during his campaign for office in 2022, as we've mentioned, some of those we just heard. Now, Santos reacted after uh, Friday's vote. He was caught on a hot mic with this reaction. I dare you, fucking bitch. Uh, Wrong clip. Here here was his actual reaction speaking with a CNN reporter. Kind of close, though. It's over. Yeah. But, but what reaction? I mean, the House votes. Well. That's their vote. Sure. They just set new dangerous precedent for themselves. Mm. Why would I want to stay here? The hell with this place. To hell. Is he on a lisp? <laughs> no, don't all, aren't all gays required to have at least kind of a lisp? Oh, yikes. To hell with this place is his commentary. He's he's sought to make himself a victim of what he calls DC insiders. He's really trying to lean into that kind of Trumpy thing of like, well, the swamp got to me. Those DC insiders can't handle me, but I'm going to take the fight to them. Again, this is a guy who has grown fatter and fatter on DC money, or at least money obtained through his prospects in DC, money fraudulently, uh, fraudulently obtained from his constituents that was supposed to go to his campaign and instead has gone to his growing gut. That is DC insider behavior, leeching off the rest of the country in a dishonest way. That is what DC does. So I don't Mm -hmm. buy that distinction at all from him. Um, And so if you ask me, Santos is a scumbag. He doesn't belong in Congress. I'm not going to cry that he's gone. However, not convinced that expelling him, the house expelling him in this way is the right move. And not just for the political reality, that this is a competitive long Island seat that could very well end up back with Democrats I think for important matters of principle, it's not the right idea to expel him. Number one, because he's not yet convicted. George Santos so far is convicted of zero, nothing. He is accused. He will face trial, assuming he doesn't agree to a plea deal. Given the evidence, I'm sure he probably will be convicted of felonies. The facts as of today are that he has not been yet. We don't want to set a standard that mere criminal accusations are sufficient to remove a member of Congress. Innocent until proven guilty is a standard not just for criminal law. It's a standard of philosophical value. It's a standard that recognizing that recognizes allowing accusations to ruin careers is wrong on principle. So I think we're, we're violating that. Fine. But number two, who should be making these decisions? Now, mm-hmm. I don't think that Santos should be in Congress. I would never vote for him to represent me in Congress. However, yeah. is it my say? Is it Mike Johnson's say or Kevin McCarthy's say, or is it the say of the people in that district in Long Island? Mm -hmm. The more we empower Congress to decide its own membership, the more power we concentrate in Congress itself, the more power we take away from ourselves being the people and the states. Now, I understand that Congress has this power by constitutional uh, designation. They're not doing something that is beyond their explicit constitutional power. But just because you have a power doesn't mean you should exercise it whenever you can. If you want limited DC power, Congress in DC, they should normalize restraint in removing decision-making from the people in the States. And this is a move that takes the decision away from the people in the States. The proper solution in my view would be for the citizens of this district to vote, which they will next year as scheduled. Now they'll be voting sooner, but that's the solution. If they think George Santos is a corrupt scumbag, they can vote in the fall and decide to boot him out. And that's one reason we have uh, elections for the house of representative uh, for house representation rather every two years. It, this is Mm -hmm. uh, it's sufficient for the people to decide, not the politicians. There's a couple other things I'll say on, on why I think this is unwise, but do you have any dispute or commentary on any of that? Do I have any dispute on any of that? No, I mean, as always, from a moral perspective, you're right. Oh, thank you. Fine. Fine. Uh, 
but also, you know, there's some justice that I want that I'm not receiving here, but I, I don't really care because the people that I hate are also voting for this. So it's not as satisfying as you would think. You mean, uh, who are the people that you hate are voting to expel Santos? Yeah. So it's not, it's not a, it's not like, like he's facing mob justice, which would be infinitely more satisfying. Um, it's all within the confines of the system. So I kind of don't give a shit. Just think how, no, what's, what's the joke I'm trying I'm just trying to think of a joke that combines his plumpness with a pitchfork. You know, who he looks like, I don't know. Who. Chris Christie. Oh, he's got like a <laughs> he looks bit like of a Chris ethnic Christie Chris Christie. He, he looks does, like, doesn't he? he looks yeah. like exotic, um, escort boy chris christie christie yeah yeah kind of i could see it okay okay so in addition to those matters of principle i think there's also the double standard here that is important to recognize um and and santos is making a lot of these these arguments um it's not necessarily the argument lots of people do it so it's okay it's lots they're, of they're, they're It's more egregious. Their violations have been have been much more egregious. Yes, some, than his. I think in particular Bob Menendez. Some of the accusations that he's making in some ethics complaints. What that we'll about get to, Adam Schiff? That that guy has never told the truth in a single sentence. Yeah, but um, but the argument here is again, it's not necessarily um, lots of people do it, so it's okay. It's lots of members of Congress do this, so they should also get booted out. As I mentioned, Senator Bob Menendez currently charged with corruption, much like Santos, for accepting payments from Egyptian officials in exchange for favorable policy decisions. Remember, he was accepting like cars and gold bars and that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Schiff, you mentioned, lied repeatedly in, among other contexts, saying he had evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, never produced it. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, because fraudulent oh, documentation yeah. is such a problem here. Ilhan Omar quite likely falsified records and or married her brother to gain entry into the country or gain his entry into the country. Just recently, Jamal Bowman, charged with unlawfully pulling a fire right. alarm in a congressional building, lied about it after the fact, too. And more. If Santos is all is out, then all of these people would have to be out for any plausible level of consistency. And so then you wonder, well, is this actually a matter of principle or is it just Democrat weaponization and Republicans going along with it or squishy Republicans or Republicans who are really Democrats going along with it anyway? Well, now you have this argument about just, is this smart politically? And again, to me, this is much less important than the matters of principle that Morality. I just discussed, but th there are political considerations here. Republicans, I think it could be fairly argued, are putting a more serious effort into removing one of their own than, I don't know, impeaching a corrupt president. That's been going yeah, on bet. for months. Yeah. And what TikTok, what's the status update on that? Mm -hmm. and, and if we believe uh, if we believe Santos should be removed, great. But get back to me when Democrats remove one of their own for anything. I mentioned Ilhan Omar. I guarantee you Ilhan Omar could walk into Congress and just shout Allahu Akbar and open up a trench coat with a with a bomb vest inside yeah. and the Democrat party, they would all say, Oh, she, she really misunderstood. It was a joke gone. wrong." It was a joke she while didn't... jerking off her brother. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you have, you're totally right. So you have this already razor thin Republican majority in the house, uh, in the house. And it's now getting thinner with Santos out. Republicans are down to 221 members to Democrats, 213. And Republican Congressman Bill Johnson of Ohio is leaving next month. He's resigning to become the president of Youngstown University. Hmm. Now, that is a strongly Republican district, so it's likely to stay that way. But there could be a vacancy there for some time also, leaving Republicans potentially with only 220 members, if my math is correct, or something close to that. Of course, passing anything, assuming party lines voting, is 218 votes, half of the 435 members plus one. So what do we have here? We have Republicans, I think, setting bad precedent to cripple their own power. It's the worst of both worlds. It's the rare type of move where you're both wrong on principle and <laughs> yeah. a move that the opposition would never make anyway. Mm. Yeah. But these people are professional losers we're talking about. So, you know, well done. Uh, and we'll see how this works out. Now, you know who, you know who is getting strangely cooler by the day? I, I can't believe Fetterman? It. Lumpy ogre Senator John Fetterman in response to this you story. You know, it's bad when John Fetterman's speaking, he's wearing a black hoodie 
And you, I'm, I know that his brain doesn't work and I still want to stand up and cheer. That like, retarded son of a bitch is making sense. That must mean that yeah. I'm brain damaged. too. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's the only way I can explain it. In response to this story, I saw a meme earlier I should have saved, but it was, it just said soon. And it was a picture of Fetterman wearing a MAGA hat and his lump on his neck was also wearing a MAGA hat. We're, we're getting close. <laughs> Of course, Fetterman um, had that funny moment mocking Republicans trying to impeach Biden. Oh, no, yeah, not that, anything right. but that. No. When I say he's cool, I think of that kind of thing. And then I think of um, his moment last month uh, handling a heckler at a campaign event. The joke's on you. I had a stroke and I can't fully understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, Fetterman's not cool as a matter of policy mm. or as a matter of being a, we you know, know. a Democrat who votes Democrat party line. I'm just saying, like, all of a sudden... Fetterman is having a few moments. So uh, this yeah. week and, and this one, I think actually is not a joke. Like th I think this one is worthy of praise on principle. He sounded remarkably coherent. He, he actually did. Yeah. Uh, he appeared on the view. And when Joy Behar asked him for his take on the expulsion of Santos, he said, sure, great. But we, you know what we really got to do? We got to go get Democrat Senator Bob Menendez out of here. Cause he did worse stuff. And he's the Senator for Egypt, not New Jersey. What's your reaction to the exp expulsion? We have a colleague in, in the Senate that actually did much more sinister and, and serious kinds of things. Uh, Senator Menendez, uh, he needs to go. Um, and if you are going to expel Santos, how can you allow to somebody like Menendez to remain in the Senate? And, you know, Santos's kind of lies were almost, you know, funny and like, you know, he you know, landed on the, the moon and a guy kind of stuff. Uh, whereas, <laughs> whereas, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, Menendez, I think is really a Senator for Egypt, you know, not New Jersey. Uh, so I, 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 I really think he needs to go. Wow. I think he's, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think that he's making like incredible progress in his recovery. <laughs> like, I can this, this Senate thing might've really reformed a lot of his synapses. I was thinking the opposite. Maybe the brain damage has knocked some sense into him. Maybe, you know, like <laughs> rare principle Democrat take. It's like, well, of course he's right. I mean, I think whatever you want of the guy and his fitness to be in office, it's hard to argue with the point. And I got to acknowledge mm -hmm. that I, for all the, for all the talk we just had, or I just had of Democrats getting in line, no matter what, and never holding their own to account. Hey, here's John Fetterman at least in his words, doing exactly that. But I got to exactly believe that. Mm -hmm. that if the vote came up tomorrow to expel Menendez, I got to believe Fetterman is a yes. He might be the only Democrat. Yes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hey, good for him. Not a guy I would vote for. Not a guy I want in the Senate, but credit a guy that I found unexpectedly impressive. Yeah. So I guess here we are. Keeps having those moments. Uh, as far as what's going to happen now, Kathy Hochul, uh, apparently totally confused about what happens on Friday. She tweeted, quote, I am prepared to undertake this solemn responsibility of filling the vacancy in New York's third district. The people of long Island deserve nothing less, but they actually do deserve less per the constitution. Cause Kathy is not supposed to be involved in selecting the person. The governor does not pick a replacement because this is not the Senate. The governor only has the authority to call a special election to fill the vacancy per constitutional requirement but kathy hochel has been on a real tyrant bend lately yeah. no, i don't know maybe that's that's not even a bend she's just that's who she is so anytime she has the opportunity to seize power that told uh the beaver face she or whatever do. frank calls her is uh she's gonna do it she's gonna seize the power she is also like a beaver so, yeah something like that something wrote in tea. Uh, so this um, this vote or this special election is, is, uh, is expected to happen in late February. The nominees will actually be selected by county party leaders. The district was represented by Democrats for 10 years before Santos. The, the congressman before his name was Tom Susie or Tom Suozzi. He is considered the favorite for the Democrat nomination. Republicans have a list of more than 20 people they are considering, according to uh, the local county GOP spokesman. So that side of the uh, the matchup is wide open. Now, as far as what George Santos is going to do, he's not going away. He's doing the opposite. He is grabbing the sword and he's trying to oust other members of Congress too. It's not just the argument of these people have to go. He's going to try it. He's going to try to get other people booted. In a sequence of tweets on Friday night, Santos announced he's filing ethics complaints. Ah. Uh. 
against four people. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, uh, he calls her Nicole Maliostocktips. Ha <laughs> ha Got her. Uh, he accuses her of insider trading. That's why. Malio. Oh, yeah. What a Stock hilarious tips. precedent to introduce into Congress. Let's get people for insider trading. Everyone does that. He didn't even mention Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, for real. Congressman, I think he did mention her actually in fairness. Yeah, Paul Pelosi. He mentioned Paul Pelosi here, but he's he doesn't, unless I'm misreading, he's not going after Nancy Pelosi with an ethics complaint. Uh, Congresswoman Mike Lawler for campaign, viol, uh, campaign finance violations, he says, uh, Congresswoman or Congressman Nick Lalota uh, for having a government job while he was attending law school at Hofstra. Santro, Santos accusation here is that Lalota was stealing public money in the form of collecting pay while not working. And then Congressman Rob Menendez, and this is very confusing because he's not to be confused with Senator Bob Menendez, but they both represent New Jersey. You got too many, you can't, Rob and Bob Menendez, just get some different representation in New Jersey. This is, this is too confusing to follow. But Santos says that his father has shady overseas business dealings. Mm. Okay. So Santos is going to keep fighting the fight. We'll see how that goes. But uh, we are definitely due for a break. So let's uh, let's hop sure. into some chats. I got Rumble ready to go, unless you want to start with YouTube and Tippy. Oh, go ahead. I got to reload. Your friendly neighborhood fed. My hockey team was eliminated from playoffs tonight after a tough 7-1 loss. There's always next season. P.S. Oh, uh, man. This is the name of a pizza place in St. Louis. Steph of Stephaninas, does that sound familiar? Nope. That's the best St. Louis pizza place. Uh, <laughs> PPS, that's the biggest dick I've ever seen on a lady. Uh, quote, Matt, probably. Uh, <laughs> but I do know what that's from. That is a quote from... Uh, that's disgusting. From Lady Ballers, the new uh, no, Daily Wire it? movie. I have not seen I it, but it I... it sucked big time and wasn't funny. I've seen the trailer. I did not watch the movie, but uh, apparently lots of people are watching it if uh, the numbers are to be believed. So can I really am I going to laugh at a movie written by a guy named Jeremy Boring? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I guess I've never seen a I've never seen a movie by him. All I will say is my view would be guaranteed if Ben Shapiro was one of the trannies, but I don't think yeah, he is, really. but he is in You're the an ass hat. The Hillbilly Deluxe says Tom Segura, comedian, has a bit about his wife falling down the stairs and the questions and skepticism. Look it up. It's pretty funny. Going downstate for more hunting. Wish me luck. Will send pics. Well, good luck and Godspeed. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know the bit about the, the wife beating, but I guess I'll have mm -hmm. to listen to it. Uh, Yakko. The U.S. Navy has been engaged in shooting down cruise missiles and drones being fired from Iran proxies in Yemen. How long until such acts are used as a distraction to justify a conflict against Iran? I don't know. I mean, I'm I think, amazed it hasn't happened yet. That's how long. I think we're kind of already there. On the other side of it, though, one story that I was fascinated with, what was that, like a month ago or six weeks ago? We have like outright Iranian spies in the Biden administration, in the State Department, the Department of Defense. So could I envision a situation in which we're like trying to instigate conflict with Iran? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. However, I also know that Iranian influence in our executive branch now is, I mean, I don't know if it's overwhelmingly strong, but it's not zero. Like people in powerful yeah. positions are outright Iranian agents and no one seems to care about that. One guy got a temporary boot pending investigation, but the other chick is still in her job. As far Good as Lord. Aware. Uh, Nikki says some shekels for my favorite podcast duo. Well, thank you for uh, thank you. Thank you. supporting the show. Very much appreciated. I am not going to be niggardly. Dick boner. <laughs> Dennis Hastert, the Republican speaker, was a literal pedo. Santos was the much needed mirror hanging up on the Capitol wall. But the blood sucking vampires couldn't bear their reflection. Well, if your reflection is George Santos, it's time to, t you know, it's time yeah. to clean it up for sure. Go back, uh, Sean A. Carbs. Fong. I like the direction this is going with Fetterman. Survivor Island, D.C. Each week, a party must pick its most corrupt member for 
expulsion. Actually, that, I that, love it. I, I, that is, uh, I like that a lot. I'm going to make, because I think that's a great idea. I'm making our first selection. <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. Survivor Island DC expulsion. I'm making I our like, first, can you se- imagine? first selection for the giveaway, Sean. Congratulations. Let's see how funny people were over on YouTube. Are you good over there? Yeah. Uh, I bought PM. Thank you. No notes. Here. Um, Long Don John. I've got a great viral marketing idea. Print off a bunch of stickers that say visit Matt is dot gay for a good time and then put them where you can legally put them. Like on a notice board or in the men's room of your nearest town. <laughs> Uh, I am not going to be niggardly. First of all, iBot, thank you. Uh, second of all, <laughs> Long Don, for your creative thinking and how to be, uh, how to make the enterprise prosperous around here, I am also going to give you an answer. <laughs> oh my okay. God, that is funny. Though um, I am going to question whether <laughs> uh, whether people seeing a sticker that says "Go to Matt is dot gay for a good time," how many people will actually. Uh, fire up their web browser on their phone and just do that without any, any worry in their head. Homosexuals. Uh, that's, that's, um, <laughs> Maybe Kyle, after five months of being unemployed in Biden's thriving economy, not only am I starting a great new job, but I'm leaving New Mexico and moving to Tennessee for it. Hoping to meet any fellow listeners in Memphis area soon. We do have a Memphis area meetup. I believe. Uh, yeah. Well, and of course uh, I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't know who to contact about that, but check out the webpage. Uh, the community page on my on my website for potential Memphis contacts, and of course, uh, congratulations on your new employment. Congratulations, yeah. butthead. Lloyd McGurkin, that makes me want a pickle right now. The night guys, first time watcher. My neighbor told me to make some remarks, starting with Matt and I once made love, but I got nothing. So- sorry, Robin says hi. By the way, it's okay. It's okay. That's an advanced. Like I've been watching the show for ten or more episodes. Joke, it's okay, Mister Gergen. They are just the best pickles. The little, the little sweet ones. Wait, what? What does it have to do with pickles? The Gherkin, Gherkin pickles. Oh, the, there it's a pickle brand. Um, you know, I I tend to be brand loyal on a lot of things. Are you a dill pickle guy? Clausen. Nobody beats Clausen. It's not. They're crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, I'm hungry. Zach Log the Great. Regarding In the Mouth of Madness, another movie where someone realizes he's fictional and meets his writer is stranger than fiction. Hmm. For, <laughs> excuse me. For an entirely different story of murder, revenge, and white lives matter at Google, The Mayor of Christ Mountain by Zach Log. Uh, yes, the, the Mayor of Christ Mountain is uh, a novel by our listener, Zach Log. So check that out. And uh, thank you, Zach Log. Appreciate it. A boogeyman 917 says, I doubt it. Neha says, blonde, what's up with the top? You're not a cougar yet. I most certainly am. I already have a kid. And it's not a top. It's a robe. And I have to go to the bathroom. You're about to see the whole thing. So. I doubt it. Thank you, Boogeyman. Sorry I was late. I uh, right bathroom right. break? Is that what you said? I, gotta okay. do it. I will read a few while you do that. Tortuga says, uh, we don't like your kind here. Was spray painted on my Zorro, my Zorro's doghouse. Is it because he's black and had interracial relations or was it an inside job? Uh, that is kind of uh, an, an inside joke there. If you listen last week, it's because Tortuga's dog ran away. His dog is a black lab who my understanding is this dog went and um, had relations with some sort of uh, was it a golden retriever? Was it a yellow lab? Some other <laughs> racially distinct dog. And uh, this is a callback to the hoax hate that I made a video about on yesterday, but actually we're going to talk about just a little bit further later in the show because it's such an incredible hoax hate that I want people who are fans of the segment to know about that one. Um, yeah, it's, it's a callback to all of those things. So, um, so we're Tortuga because it is, it involves so many, so many show memes. I'm going to enter you as well. <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. This is a lot of clerical work, though. I need to figure out how to uh, streamline the process because I, in addition to figuring out how to contact people, I have to keep a record of all these selected chats, too. So bear with me as I get through it here. Uh, John Becker says, uh, how long until you dump tenant? The view count on your videos there compared to your normal channel is abysmal. And being on the same media channel as Dave Rubin is just demeaning to your content. Well, uh, I'm sorry that you feel that way or don't like it, but you don't build something worthwhile overnight. Overnight. So it's going to be a long-term project. 
Um, if you feel like my content is demeaned, then don't watch the content. If you feel like having something you don't like next to it is so discrediting to the material that I make, hey man, I'm not I'm not asking you to go over and watch it against your will. So how long, how long until you dump tenant? I'm not going to do that because I'm a person who sticks by what I commit to. I think it's a great opportunity for me. And I think number one, it would be contrary to everything. I live by myself and everything I intend to teach my sons in the future that if something's not immediately successful, you better quit. If you don't have immediate gratification, you better quit. Also, if you commit off Dave Rubin anyway, because it's on Guy Benson. (laughs) I saw the controversy about that. Yeah. And by the way, you know, I understand why people are bothered by that. And the idea of, of this sort of gay adoption by surrogacy, like that's something that we've talked about on this show yeah. significantly. And it's something that, yeah, honestly, I do have moral problem with. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that my expectation for the project is not that I'm going to have perfect agreement with everybody or that everybody is going to live a life that I agree with and uh, lives up to my moral standard completely and wholly. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So if, if you want to have the benefit of working with others, you have to under, understand that philosophy or understand that, that system. And, you know, as long as nobody's coming at me and trying to control my content, that's good enough for me. And no, nobody's yeah, doing that. So that's true. Um, you know, so no, I'm not going to be a baby about it and say, well, this, I didn't have the biggest numbers in the world day one. So I'm quitting. That's a loser mentality. That's what losers do. Channel. And it would be a bitch thing for me to do to commit myself to this project. The great opportunity given to me and say, Oh no, I didn't get exactly what I wanted in month one. So I'm, I'm turning my backs on you guys. Like what kind of bitch person does that? So no, I'm not doing any of those things. And if you don't like it, Again, I'm not compelling you to go over there and watch it. I understand why you might not like it. That's totally fine. But yeah, asking me to bitch out and go against everything that I just said I would do and turn my back on a project, one of the better opportunities I've ever had in my life as far as I'm concerned, because, oh, you didn't get the numbers that you wanted day one. No, I'm not in this strictly by a numbers game. Like I don't look at it and think, if it doesn't get this number on this day, I'm out. Yeah. This is a long-term project. This is something you build mm-hmm. over time. In the same way that my same videos, what, five, six, seven years ago, were getting view counts in the hundreds. You know? Yeah. Like, why would you continue to do this? Why, why, why would you? Nobody's watching that. You should quit. Yeah. There is a world in which I quit in 2016 because it made no sense because I had no money. And because I wasn't getting good view counts. Guess what happens if I quit in 2016? None of this is ever built. Yeah. yeah. So no, so l- listen, John, I appreciate your support for the show. But if you're trying to get me to quit and turn my back on things I've committed to, you're barking up the wrong tree. It's not going to happen. I'm so glad that I wasn't the one that read that super chat. Uh, but, you know, if you try just one more, if you if, one more super chat telling me to quit. Then, is this uh, the same guy as the last one? No, I don't think so. Different guy. Oh. Just one um, more time. Just one more time, and I'll certainly obey you. Let's uh, end on Mojack420. It's sure. a better note. No, it's not. He's the cancer guy. <laughs> God bless it. Mojack420. Miss y'all live the past two weeks due to side effects from my cancer treatment, which has turned my T cells into the right wing death squad, and it's causing a cancer holocaust. I'm like that other hoax. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I know that it's politically incorrect, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to deprive <laughs> cancer guy. Oh my God. That is I'm doing funny. It. He gets it. I'm not depriving cancer guy of his hollow, hollow hoax joke. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not a monster. Well, uh, uh because of that now, uh, John gets his wish. I'm deleted off the internet because of that. It's all over. <laughs> I mean, Let's do one more. Just as, yeah. Uh, Smeg Bukaki 69. The Aussie Christmas party was the highlight of the year. Things were hanging out with us. It was great seeing you. I love that Christmas party. It's so fun. Every year I look forward to the hangout. You guys always laugh at my jokes and it makes We me love you. Awesome you're very it. special. We do. We love you and you're very special. It was cool to see you, man. As I mentioned with you guys and as I mentioned at the top of the show, it's really gratifying to see a group of, of really a, a, a big giant valuable friendship in that way to know that the, this stupid show has helped to craft something like that, particularly in insane times where you know good friends can be hard to come by. 
Um, True. We are tremendously grateful to have you guys organized around this stupid show and equally grateful that you would include us in that, uh, that little party. Cause it's a lot of fun and I appreciate seeing it, you know, um, things like that for as heated, for as bothered and heated as I get when people like try to tell me to quit stuff or do that, you know, that sort of thing that we're just talking about. It's like when we have the Australian, uh, party meetup, or I got an email this week from a, from a guy who told me that our show changed his mind and convinced him to become a father. Oh, that's so great. And I was reading it to my wife in bed the other night. Um, you have to focus on that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, th- there's some really that's, cool, incredible stuff. I got an email last week it. saying that they did not circumcise their son because of it. <laughs> Congratulations. I like to think that I'm saving baby for his <laughs> Oh, good for you. In that case, you are though. I'm not even taken away you. from the point. No, I mean, it. There is you got to reframe your mind to really appreciate things that are valuable and positive and not spend as much time on things that are negative or destructive. But uh, but, you know, such is the battle. And uh, of course, appreciate everybody who is supporting the show. Very much appreciate it. Let's get back into the news, which, of course, is, uh, well, it's news that we discussed last week with important updates because we know that Derek Chauvin got stabbed in federal prison. Now we know how many times he got stabbed and most importantly, who did the stabbing. So what yeah, do we yeah. got? Federal prosecutors announced on Friday uh, that this other inmate, ex-FBI informant, uh, stabbed him 22 times when they were in a library together. His name is John Terzak. 52. Um, and he is facing multiple assault, assault charges. Let's see uh, more about the charges. Attempted murder, assault with the intent to commit murder, assault with a dangerous weapon, and assault resulting in bodily injury. And he's he's looking at, at having 60 years added to his federal sentence, and he was about to get out in 2026. So due for if convicted, and I have to imagine he's going to be convicted, this is a, it's a life in prison situation for him, I assume. Do we know how old he is? Yeah. 62. Oh yeah. So he's not 60 year sentence is life in prison unless it gets yeah, reduced yeah, for yeah. some reason. So it was some kind of shank. It was an improvised knife and he did it on this day to symbolize the black lives matter movement, which itself so what is, we know about this guy is bizarre so gay, for reasons right? that I want to mention, uh, mention at the top of the show. Like he's not black. He's a Mexican gang member, but loves black lives matter. But the association of black Friday with black lives matter. What the hell yeah. is that? Really we bizarre. shot on yeah. Black Friday to honor George Floyd or something. Yeah. It's, it's what is bizarre. he talking so about? He, he was an informant in 97. Uh, and and he informed all, on his separate gangs. So he had all these recordings and conversations between him and members and his associates. Kind of on his side because he had to do some drug dealers so he didn't blow his, some drug deals. So he didn't blow his cover. And he told the FBI, he's like, listen, I'm, I'm engaged in like a lot of illegal ongoing activity. And they told me just to do what you need to do. Yeah. And then, and then they got him on those, um, on those charges. Like oh, they through. betrayed him on that. I thought yes, they, they dropped him it. as an informant because he was dealing drugs and, Did, and they brought money. charges. He, they didn't just drop him as a, they actually prosecuted him for those actions. No, they prosecuted him even though his work with the FBI resulted in 40 indictments. Well, he really got a and raw deal. He, he ratted he, he and he went to prison. He ratted, yes. And okay. he went to the FBI and was like, I am doing these things. Like, I'm still dealing drugs. I'm still authorizing some of these assaults. And the FBI straight up was like, it's cool. And then they and then they dropped him as an informant and left him no protection. So he also was working as a, an FBI informant against the Mexican mafia. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like somebody gave him some major incentive to do this. Well, that's why I, I think that quote is um, is particularly interesting. Uh, and it, it might just be this statement. I can't remember if there was another statement. But previously he said that, you know, I'm, I'm committing these crimes because other people or other factors are, are putting me up to it. There was this quote. Uh, I don't know if this is the one you were referencing or a different one. But he said this in his 2001 case or his uh, sentencing. Uh, quote, I didn't commit those crimes for kicks. I did them mm-hmm. because I had to, if I wanted to stay alive. Yeah. I, I told that to the FBI agents and they just said, do what you have to do. Do what you have to do. Yeah. So, so the question, I know that's 20 years ago now, but this is a guy saying, Hey man, 
I didn't want to be a criminal, but forces A, B, and C made me do this or else I would have been killed or had some greatly mm-hmm. negative consequence. Black can change in 20 years. Maybe he is that motivated to honor Black Lives Matter on Black Friday. Or is this a similar situation in which he has to return to criminality because if he doesn't, he'll die or have some yeah. other greatly negative Something consequence. Something is up there. Something's up. And if it, if you think that there might be some influence pushing him to do this, and if he doesn't do it, he'll die or have some greatly negative consequence. Well, um, then we have to question who is the influence. He's had past involvement with both the FBI and Mexican gangs. Mm-hmm. And so you take your pick on who do you think is more involved in federal prisons, the FBI or Mexican gangs. But the, the yep. pushback, obviously, that, that I'll offer, as I did at the top of the show, uh, probably every other person in federal prison is a federal informant to some extent. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know that he's unique in that regard. But the one thing I can't get over too, like I, I, not that it's impossible to be like Hispanic and a black lives matter supporter. I'm just it's saying weird though, black people and Mexican people hate each other in every American city. So what's the deal? Like Mexican gang members. Yeah. Like the LA race war <laughs> would tell you that these are not uh, like Mexican gangs and uh, black criminals are not like, allies because they aren't white contrary to the progressive narrative they um yeah they fight each other quite aggressively yes so to the extent he was involved with mexican gangs i just i have a hard time believing he had some sworn black lives matter allegiance i don't know i mean i guess the stuff i'm thinking about is 20 years in the past maybe a lot changes to who he is now in prison it just um there are some funny smelling things in this story that's all it, but it could okay. be completely as told. I don't know. Did you have so. uh, no. you have any other thoughts on it? No, I mean, I, I just wonder what kind of incentive somebody would have to have to spend the rest of their life in prison. I mean, he could he could be alive for forty more years. Uh, the incentive He's is like we won't kill you if you age. do it. Yeah, but what, what kind of life is that? I guess in? maybe you'd rather be dead, unless the federal yeah. prison is sweet. It might be. That wouldn't be enough for most people, I think. I don't know. Hmm. Uh. Oh, I got it. Are you ready for hoax hate? Always. This, uh, I mean, I, I just play the hoax hate sounder in honor of what, at least publicity wise, is probably the greatest hoax hate of all time. And now the nobody saw it happen, <laughs> but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. Well, tell me all about it, Jussie Smollett's appeal has been denied. That's pretty much the right. whole thing. Yeah. He's going back to Illinois jail at appeals some point. Court. Yeah. yeah, probably. Upheld uh, his disorderly conduct conviction in a ruling on Friday, two to one. Um, their only legal avenue at this point is to ask the Illinois Supreme Court to hear the case, which I don't think is going to happen, right? We don't have any tell yet that I've seen, at least that I've read. I yeah, I mean, this I, I kind of don't care about this because it doesn't it doesn't get to the heart of the case, like what it's he procedural. actually did. Yeah. It's procedural, so it doesn't feel like that much of a win. But he will spend 150 days in jail. What is that? Six months? Almost half a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, does this get you going? Um, the prospect of him going back to jail. Yeah. Because it's going to, I don't know. I just want to see a reenactment of the scene. Although I don't know if any of this is going to be public in the way that that original conviction was. Um, but, uh, as far as the process here, just so we're clear, recall that Jesse spent six days in jail in March of 2022 after his conviction. Then he got out pending appeal. The result that is this appeal. So he's been out of jail this entire time for the last what year and a half until this appeal is decided. This is the appeal. It is now decided. So that means that he's, unless there's some Supreme court intervention, he's going back to jail. I don't know. I'm not an expert on the Illinois uh, state Supreme court. Obviously, I don't know how likely or how often they intervene with criminal cases like this, especially ones that are like, even though this was high profile in the media, it's kind of low consequence. It's not like guy on death row. Yeah. It's not life in prison. It's like, okay, you get a few months in jail. I don't, it, I would be very surprised if the Illinois Supreme court 
intervenes in any meaningful way. So that just leaves the question of when is Jesse going back to jail? I was trying to yeah. find some speculation or some expectation. I really couldn't find um, that today. So I don't know, but I, I would assume that the Illinois state, uh, state Supreme court would have some kind of, some kind of answer on whether they'd agree to hear the case in some sort of relatively short order. And we'll know probably within the next uh, few weeks or, you know, the next month about what his fate is as far as going to jail. But that's just my guess. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. Now, yeah. Uh, this isn't true, but I wish it was. In response to the denial of his appeal, <laughs> Jesse once again issued a statement. I am not suicidal. But if he can't did, help yourself, uh, can you? if he did show up dead in prison, uh, I'm not even sure I would believe him. Like he could do a hoax, racist murder. Yeah, really. Or maybe I would believe him. Like uh, Jesse Smollett, as we'll get to, has been outdone in hoax hates. Like he's kind of. As far as effort level, he's kind of mid. You know, he, he did That's go through true. the effort of hiring yeah. the Osendairos, but he's not burning down his own house and that kind of stuff. So if he really Bro. wants to escalate, he needs to show up dead in an actual suicide and frame it as a racist prison murder. That's true. Then he'll have respect in the hoax hate game. <laughs> Maybe the best career move he could make to uh, restore his legacy. But uh, but that's it on I Jesse. Love we're, prison. We're just on jail. Well, I'm sure he. Yeah, he probably will. You're right. It'll probably be the most action he's seen in a while. I'm guessing. Uh, I don't know. Like if Jesse goes to a gay bar and tries to pick someone up Don Lemon style, does it work out? <laughs> like, is he big in the gay know. community, or do the gays hate him too? Maybe. I mean, he's still kind of rich, right? I don't know. Uh, that show was not that big. Of, that was one of the. Le- the least believable things about his story. Hey, it's that empire faggot. As though anyone watched the show empire in the first yeah. place. Nobody picking out. Nobody watch that. Yeah. I guarantee you before the hoax hate incident, if you asked me to pick out Jussie Smollett in a line of random, I wouldn't people, have been able to do it except he was in that one movie we watched. Dude, I, I had no idea who he was. Couldn't, I never would have been able to tell you. So I don't know that the money from empire is all that great. I'd be surprised if it was probably look that up somewhere might be publicly available. Anyway, we're now on Jesse jail watch. It really could be any time and it's, it's more likely than ever that it's going to happen now. So that'll be fun. Uh, now remember back in the day at your alma mater. In fact, you probably only missed this by, Oh, I don't even have the story. Let me get this, that, that story because this is kind of a, a new development. Uh, why don't I have it? Hold on, hold on. The, um, I only missed this by five years. Yeah, you could have been there because back in the day when the uh, the Mizzou Black Lives Matter stuff was really kicking off, one of the initiating incidents was an alleged poop swastika found yes, smeared on the the dorm uh, the the wall of a dorm bathroom, and so that's always been kind of its own. As, as far as I'm aware, they never found the uh, the poop smearer who did. The poop swastika. And in the story, there was even some leftover poop on the door handle. That's how nasty this person was. Uh, But I don't think they ever found the person. This was always kind of its own unique, highly likely to be hoax hate. But this week, we have uh, a development of something that's at least a, a, a similar theme, or perhaps the other side of the arrangement. The toilet paper swastika. A... A Jewish student at New York City's Baruch College was startled to find a large swastika on the floor next to a toilet when he entered the school bathroom on Tuesday morning. According to a relative of the student speaking with the Jewish press, and I love this quote, quote, the swastika was made of two layers of wet toilet paper. Now, I'm not sure if that means double ply like this school isn't so cheap that they give you the single ply stuff or if this it, it, it means like it's there's more effort did he yeah did this person do two layers like he's painting he wanted to make sure this swastika was extra visible but two layers of wet toilet paper quote meticulously adhered to the tile floor obviously by a student of geometry <laughs> and those are those are very right angles <laughs> This person did have the uh, the grout lines and the tile to work with to get it nice and square. True, so I'm sure true. that helped. 
The student who discovered the toilet paper swastika and his relative are protecting their identities due to concerns about possible attacks by anti-Semites. And so what are the possible attacks or what is he worried about? The student says he encountered different acts of anti-Semitism on his way to school, either on the subway or on the streets with painted swastikas or anti-Jewish slogans on the store windows or on the sidewalks. There was a quote in here too about a Palestinian flag. Like one of the things that's considered hateful is just he saw a, okay, last week he entered the lobby of his school and there was a Palestinian flag hanging in the balcony above. The security had to wait for NYPD to come in to protect them and only then removed it. So like the sight of a, not even a Hamas flag, a Palestinian flag is um, one of the perceived threats. But what I find interesting about these claims, like I don't know if they're true or not, you're telling me. Mr. Student Guy who discovered the <laughs> toilet paper swastika. You walk through New York City in this school all the time and you encounter all sorts of anti-Jewish yeah. hate all the time. You see swastikas everywhere. You see people putting signs in their windows about how bad Jews are, whatever you say. <laughs> you see Palestinian flags in the balcony at your school. As far as I'm aware, this person has not raised a big issue of any of these things. The one thing that is a danger that he has to run to the press with is I opened the bathroom stall and there was toilet paper in the shape of a swastika. Right. That is the most dangerous one. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm i conflicted about how this could actually happen. On the one hand, like, could I envision a troll doing this for the lols? Yeah. Could I envision this guy doing it to make a hoax himself? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with 80% sure it's a hoax. Hmm. Uh, it's a unique one, you know, maybe not the highest effort we've ever seen, but I've never seen a toilet paper swastika in all of my yeah. time doing this. That's true. I just want to make sure people are aware of this story because you sent me this story earlier in the week and I'm very glad that Couldn't you did. I believe it. I, what am I saying? Yes, I could. It's the most predictable, really shocking thing ever. Most predictable outcome ever. But, um, but yeah, I, so I'm glad that you did cause I actually did not encounter this on my own otherwise. And, um, I couldn't, it, it was so good that I couldn't wait until today to talk about it. So I posted my own video about it yesterday. Uh, I think it's one of the most involved hoax hates that we've ever seen. That yeah. video is available on my website, Maddie's. He really committed. If you want to check it out. Um, or of course you can head on over to tenants channels. It's on their YouTube and rumble channel. You can find it there. This is, there's only one other case that I can remember of someone burning down their own house in a hoax hate case. And that it was, was those lesbians. Yeah. Well, it, it was the, tr yeah, I mean, transgender man Nikki Jolly in Michigan killed her cats and dogs in, yeah. in the fire. And we highlighted this case back in June. This is a black guy in Huntsville, Texas, north of Houston. He was in a dispute with the homeowners association in the neighborhood where he owned two houses. He was managing his short term rentals or Airbnb properties. The HOA, for whatever reason, they decide they don't like short term rentals in the neighborhood anymore. They vote to ban them. Right. That's right. This, and it's not just that this guy had, you know, revenue from Airbnb. Now there's information coming out. He owed a ton of money. He hadn't How paid much? taxes on these properties for five years. Ooh. There was a, a tax bill he was facing close to 30 grand from the county. And right before yeah. he did the original graffiti on the door, we don't like your kind here in word. Uh, the, the county was initiating legal action to seize the house or force the sale of the house or whatever they needed to do to collect their debt because he had not paid uh, his taxes. Now, very sympathetic with uh, fighting property tax disputes because property tax is bullshit. However, this guy hoaxed to a very high level yeah. to do that. Uh, so um, new pieces of information we got. The level of financial trouble that he was in the sequence of events here, I should, I should mention in, in May after the vote happens on the Airbnb, he, he presumably he graffitis the house to say, we don't like your kind and word. Then nothing happened. Then the house burned down in June. So the, yeah. the graffiti didn't produce the desired effect. So we just went all the way. It looks like new information we have is the degree of financial trouble that he was in, but also we knew at the time, and this is one of the oddities that you and I discussed at the time, Two guys died in this house fire, including yeah. one person who was a relative of his. And then a third was actually on fire, running away from the house, ripping his clothes off, and he jumped into a car to escape. So that brings That's up right. all kinds of questions that are still unanswered. Like, 
did he intend for these people to die? Was it that they were starting the fire and they botched it and killed themselves? Was it an accident that they died? Like, what are the, how did they die? We still don't know. But what we do know is that the guy who was on fire, engulfed in flames, running away, according to the neighbor witnesses, that's true because that guy drove his truck away, crashed his car, presumably because he was so injured from being burned alive. And a sheriff's deputy catches up with him. And a sheriff's deputy who has a body cam on starts talking to him and saying, hey, man, what's going on here? What, what are you doing here? I came up from Houston. I was told to come up from Houston because we was doing a numbers job on this house. <laughs> he can barely talk because he's dying. You got to listen to the footage. Yeah. A numbers yeah. job refers to insurance fraud. Yeah. So you have a guy who was nearly burned alive, gasping for air, speaking with the sheriff's deputy saying, yeah, I came up from Houston because uh, we were hired out to burn this house down uh, as, a, as a matter of collecting insurance money. So this homeowner, Mario Robertson, was charged with felony arson on Monday. But the mystery continues because there's still there's still no charges related to the deaths. We still don't know who the people are who died, why they died, what fault he has How legally bizarre. speaking. It's just like they're just in the ashes. So that's a big mystery. And uh, again, for all the full details of the case, video I posted yesterday, check out my website or of course, Tenet's YouTube or Rumble channels for all of that. Because I normally try to save hoax hate for our segment. This was one where I'm just like, is this too juicy? Gotta I talk got, about it. This yeah. is like, is, this one's one of the best hoax hates of all time. Way better than Jussie. Way higher effort. Oh yeah. Here's a pretty good one, though, or at least a, a, a one that is new in style. In Charlotte, North Carolina, a transgender person uh, was at a bar, and this is a man presenting as a woman, and he claimed that the uh, the bouncer assaulted him. He said that while he's at the bar trying to get some food, this bouncer grabbed him by the arm, excuse me, and threw him to the ground and choked him, among other physical attacks. And the attack was captured on video. And then the tranny was hospitalized in what was characterized as an obviously hateful transphobic attack because the bouncer supposedly said transphobic or homophobic slurs. Here's the news report. 1230. Um, I was just kind of just kind of bouncing around. Lynette Matusik detailing her Friday night in Noda. Looking for a little bit of food at the end of the night. And I came to this bar, Billy Jack Shack. Things like this didn't used to happen. Hey, whoa. You are looking at video recorded by her from her Meta Ray-Ban glasses. They are just glasses that record. She says she went up to the bar at Billy Jack's. I see the bartender. I'm waver down to try and get a food menu. <laughs> and that's when someone's grabbing my arm. What happened? And next, she could not have imagined. Oh, hey, get your hands off me. And then he just grabs me, like all of me. In the video, you can see her stumble to the ground. She says the guard placing his hands around her throat began to yell homophobic slurs. Why are you choking me? Why are you choking me? The GM says the bouncer asked for ID, but Matusik did not provide it. Matusik says she didn't hear anything about an ID at all. I showed him the video and photos of Matusik in her hospital bed and asked if this type of infraction warranted this level of force. He wouldn't comment. Yeah, no, the tranny must have initiated this. Uh, that, the facts suggest that is the case. Hmm. But in response to this incident, the bar, this is Billy Jack's shack, said it is no longer using the third party security company that provides uh, or did provide this security guard. This private security firm has also since been found to be uncertified or unlicensed, which uh, is a violation of the law in North Carolina. You have to be licensed to provide private security. Apparently, this uh, particular firm was not. But buried in the details of a report, again, that emphasizes whether or not the security firm was licensed, headline, North Carolina board, private security firm in Charlotte bar scuffle with woman, man, had no license. Okay, I mean, I guess that's an important piece of the fact pattern, but it doesn't really explain the nature of the confrontation, does it? You dig into the details. Well, uh, this wasn't a transphobic attack. This wasn't a dispute over ID, as originally claimed. In fact, as you mentioned, the tranny attacked first, at least mm. according to the bouncer. But as we'll get to, according to law enforcement now too, the tranny uh, bit him on the thigh 
ah, to initiate the confrontation. Now, maybe you think that's just one man's word against another, but the only criminal charge coming from this case now, at least so far, is against the tranny. A simple ch- assault charge for the bite. Now, I don't even understand. How does one man just bite another man's thigh in any sort of casual interaction? Yeah, yeah. I don't even understand how that would work. But I do know if I was in a public place and another man bit my thigh, I would, uh, well, I hope I would respond with such dignity as choking him out (laughs) and punching him in the face. Because you don't bite a man's thigh, okay? This is a society, all right? What's the quote from Jim Jeffries? I hate hate the guy's politics, but the, the quote is always great. We live in a society. We aren't fucking animals or whatever. You don't. It's a bit about, um, about airplane seats and who has the right to what space in the airplane. It's a really good bit actually, but uh, we live in a society. We aren't fucking animals. Men don't bite other men's thighs. All right. You do that. Bad stuff's going to happen. Not a matter of transphobia, just a matter of uh, reality. Can you imagine, is there any situation in your head where you can imagine a guy just biting another guy's thigh? How does that even happen? Uh, outside of like a weird sex thing no yeah i mean like just in a bar two guys in the same proximity i don't know but uh that is what police investigators have found now uh last week we discussed the dublin riots in -hmm. response to the uh that migrant school stabbing of course the civil unrest continues I saw just earlier today, Conor McGregor was once again posting a picture of himself saying something like future Irish prime minister or whatever the you know, the high political office is there. So it sounds like he's serious. Maybe that's going to happen. <clears throat> or at least he's testing the prospect. Of course, um, the civil unrest in general continues. Part of the uh, the messaging that protesters are using is is the phrase Irish lives matter much like white lives matter became controversial a few years ago in West Belfast, a sign emerged this week that says, yeah, Irish lives matter. But specifically, at least this incident in this case, it was a graffiti on the wall of the Kennedy center on the falls road. But apparently there were banners that say Irish lives matter that have been hung in other parts of the city as well. But the member of uh, parliament for this area His name is Paul Maskey, and uh, he said, uh, the the quote he offered to the the Belfast Telegraph was, it is deeply concerning and disgraceful that these offensive and racist signs have been erected in an attempt to create fear and intimidate people. Another member of parliament for the area, uh, Jerry uh, Carroll, Carl? We are under no illusions that Irish Lives Matter is a racist slogan which is directly counterpoised to movements against the oppression faced by black people and other ethnic minorities. Now, come on. Of course, the vandalism is a crime. You know, uh, that's a property crime. But police aren't stopping there. They are treating the graffiti as a hate incident because the saying Irish Lives Matter is considered a, a hate message. So retarded. Anyone with information on who is behind the Irish Lives Matter messaging is asked to contact police so that this thought crime is dealt with swiftly. As we discussed last week, when the government decides that certain perspectives or certain viewpoints or certain sayings or certain words are banned, they invite violence because they've taken words as a means of conflict resolution off the table. Mm -hmm. So if the government... If the government was just investigating the property damage, fine, but they aren't. They're policing the perspective of the property damage overtly. They're not even hiding that anymore. They're saying, yeah, the fact that they think Irish lives matter is worthy of unique punishment. So we're going after them on that basis. I I'll be curious to see how this, um, how this develops. I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't, Obviously, we didn't see rioting this week like we did, at least on the level that we did. In, but we know um, it's in them, you know. I just, th- this is so unsustainable because the, yeah. the public outrage at the, well, the stabbing itself and immigration policy, that's not going away. You're not just going to erase that. And when the police force mm-hmm. or the government starts saying, actually, you're not allowed to comment publicly, at least in certain ways about that. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> what else we got? What other methods are there? When they get mad when they start spray painting or breaking glass or something. Just be thankful it isn't your face because you're eliminating (laughs) options 
for how to manage this conflict and you're leaving only face breaking very soon. So any other uh, thoughts you had on that? No, I mean, we'll see if they, if they truly had it in them or if this was anomalous, but I think they do. I think hmm. they want their country back. Maybe you will find a, a, a home of paradise one day in the Irish countryside. Is that a thing? I assume there's an Irish countryside. I don't know. I've never of been. Of course there. there is. Good <laughs> Lord. I would assume it's very nice. <laughs> All right. It's time for the movie review then. In a world of movie references flying over his head, one man will finally watch them. This is the Matt and Blonde Show movie review. This week's movie is the 2004 Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, psychological rom-com Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, in which after a relationship sours, a woman undergoes an experimental neurological procedure to erase painful memories and her ex-boyfriend follows, only to end up back together again anyway. We don't have any uh, movie uh, picker commentary this week because Eternal Sunshine is a random selection from the imdb top 250 list after last week's nominations were rejected by vote it is currently ranked at number 93 we do of course have ai face swaps uh this one's oh there we go it just took a second to load up you look like wendy to me in this one (laughs) you look like wendy the wendy's mascot you look like dave she though uh yeah kind of i like it yeah uh this uh I guess I map onto Jim Carrey fairly well. The one where it's just my head in the, uh, the brain cooker doesn't look all that crazy. I don't know. The beard's probably a little bit better than my real beard, but <laughs> yeah. this one where we are side by side on the ice, I don't know which one I, th- I don't know what That's it is so about funny. you being so tall. That makes me uncomfortable. It makes me more uncomfortable <laughs> than myself with long blue hair. Oh, geez. But, uh, those are always enjoyed. And thank you to listeners, Jamie and Jeannie for those. And uh, the the video submission, the video face swap continues as well. Now, because the copyright bots are all over it, I had to cut this up a little bit. So bear with the chop. But the full unedited version is in the uh, movie review if you want to watch it. I mean, she's smart, I think, but not educated. Hi. How do you pronounce library? Library. Hi. Look what I found. Truly seductive quality of Clementine. Your personality promises to take you out of the mundane. And there's Caesar. Skinny. Caesar always finds a way in. (laughs) That is so good. Wait, Caesar was in there? Yeah, in the artwork. It's like a skeleton, him and her. I didn't and then, see. Uh, one more time, one more time. Let me pause it at the right spot. Oh my gosh. How did I miss that? I mean, she's smart. Oh, I that's think. Maybe I should dye my hair blue. Skinny. Hold on. I went too far. Uh, right. There. See, there's a little Caesar <laughs> skeleton. <laughs> that is so excellent. Yeah. Details. Oh, stupid Caesar. He's dead. That is true. No, he's uh, living out his days on a happy farm. That's what uh-huh. I was told. Uh-huh. Okay, as really always, your review and your rating. Um. So I, I saw this when I was, I think, a teenager. It was 20 years ago? Yeah. Um. And I didn't remember that much from it, but I, I rewatched it, and I, I loved it. I thought it resonated more with me probably this time. Um, I'm sure you're going to talk about this, but the most interesting part of this film is the ethics behind the procedure. On the one hand, the people consented to it, but on the other hand, can anyone truly understand the widespread implications of going through a procedure? Oh, you just kidding. Oh. Uh, going through a procedure like this and and losing an entire relationship, the good and the bad. Like can can you really achieve consent in this situation? Um, I don't think so. So Mary, the homewrecker that she was, she ended up kind of being the hero of this. Hmm. Um, And I love that Joel and Clementine were both kind of shitty, flawed people. But like all of us, they chose, even knowing uh, in the face of evidence that they were like doomed for for failure, they chose to be in love again. And um, I thought that was just such like a, a human take on the whole situation. I really liked it. I just like really enjoyed watching it again. I thought it was great. Um, I gave it a five. five. So I hope you liked it. Uh, I 
as I mentioned, I saw this in college sometime around 2007 when, yes, I worked at a movie rental store, despite having never seen a single movie in my life. Someone told me I had to watch this movie. And so I saw yeah. it and I remember loving it. I remember thinking it was one of the best movies I've ever seen just in terms of deep thought. Um, and now? And well, it was actually on my list of of my favorite movies for nomination back when I had it. And I think Jurassic Park was picked instead of that. But huh. uh, do you think it held up for me or have I come around in my older years? Well, because of the ethical and the philosophical stuff, which I'm sure you're going to beat to death right now, I think you liked it. Okay. Uh, you would be correct. Although, ah! as I mentioned a little bit before we went live, there were so many pieces of the side plot, the subplot that I had forgotten entirely. Mm-hmm. So some of that stuff, this is one of those movies where it has characters I hate, but I'm supposed to hate them, so I allow it. Kind of like- um, Like Clementine? Uh, no, really the side characters, the people involved in the memory erasing. I hate them all. Every single person. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, um, what was the movie we watched with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey and, oh, right. uh, contact Contact. where I I hated her character, but then I realized I'm supposed to hate her. So I kind of liked it. All right. You're right. You're right that I'm going to, that I really am fascinated by the ethics of this procedure. And again, for people who haven't seen the movie, the idea of if you could erase bad memories in your mind, would you, could you, should you? And I, I focus a little bit less on like, are the people doing this bad guys, which I I think they are, but more Mm -hmm. on the decision of whether you should do that if you had the opportunity. And I think obviously the movie's answer is no, but I think it, it, it's answering no correctly for the right reasons. Right reason. Um, Life teaches you harsh, painful lessons all the time. How do you intend to learn from them if you simply erase the lesson from your mind? You are committing yourself to relive that pain and that bad choice and that bad action. Once again, if you erase the reminder in your brain, the lesson in your brain to to do that. But one thing that's fascinating to me about this, like everybody has a defining moment in their life that went the wrong way. And it's tempting and easy to get lost in the what if thoughts. What if I had done this? What if I had intervened? Maybe I could have saved that person. Maybe I could have stopped this. And we always think of that butterfly effect or that counterfactual as a positive. Like I Mm -hmm. definitely would have saved the day if not for this. But our lives aren't that simple. Like even our, our worst memories or our worst experiences, they have silver lining and they have purpose. Yeah. And the greatest things that ever happen to you, they also come with pain. They come with mm-hmm. sacrifice. And it's really interesting to watch Joel realize that as he's watching these memories disappear. It's like, oh yeah, having this woman in my head is painful now because I know what I lost. But when I see the things that we shared start disappearing from my brain, I want out of here. Can you hear me? I don't want this anymore. It's because our lives are not as simple as like, this was good. This was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Some things are more in one category or another, but bad things have silver linings. Good things are still painful too. You can't really surgically divide them in such a way. So that that's just fascinating to me. It's, it's a fool who throws away a life lesson. And fundamentally, this is the concept of throwing away life lessons disguised as a service or, you know, something that we can provide ourselves comfort with. I find this theme that they end up back together in the way that you described. You know, I, I, I hadn't even thought that much about choosing each other despite the evidence, because of course they do get those tapes in the end. Mm-hmm. But I really wrestle in my mind with concepts of a fate or destiny versus free will. And yeah. uh, I, because on the one hand, like, you know, I mentioned this last week with the um, mouth of madness review. Uh, I certainly believe that free will is a necessary piece of any moral structure for right and wrong to exist, we all have to have the capacity to choose right or wrong or else you can't really, if you're not making that choice yourself, you're not doing good or bad things. You're just doing what you were predisposed to do. On the other hand, to the extent I believe that life has purpose, we're all here for a reason. I think there is a trajectory that you're supposed to be on. There's, Mm -hmm. there are things you're supposed to do by, I, at least in my view, some kind of design in the way that I experience that or the way that I explain that is like all the best things that I have in my life from my family, uh, the decision to leave my real job to start this bullshit YouTube channel. 
the house that I sit in now where I, I will grow my family for the rest of my life. All of those things are decisions that weren't completely rational or obvious at the time. It was just like some force of the world is like, you're supposed to do this right now. Mm-hmm. This is your path. Take it. And it's like, what is that force? It, I think in the context of this movie, it's exactly what happens to Joel. Okay. Joel and Clementine are together. It goes south. They get the memory erased. Joel's feeling sad. Doesn't even fully understand why, but he's got that same sort of, of force speaking to him. I got to skip work today. I got to take the train to Montua. However you pronounce that place. Uh, do you know East coaster? Mon- Montauk? Montauk. Montauk. Is that it? Or Montauk. He doesn't know why it's kind of out of character. Seemingly silly. Doesn't make sense, but he must do it. And the reason he must do it is because the world intends for him to find Clementine again. And it doesn't matter how many times Joel chooses. Otherwise it doesn't matter if he outright erases her from her brain. He's mm-hmm. supposed to find her. And until he chooses correctly, they'll keep traveling these different paths that ultimately will bring them back together anyway. And so I'm not saying of course that you should just be completely impulsive or reckless or thoughtless with your life. I'm just saying if the world has a plan or a purpose for you, I think the world does drop clues frequently and there's wisdom in picking up on those clues and following them. Even when the path doesn't seem obvious or rational or logical. And that's sort of how I reconcile these ideas of fate or destiny and free will. It's like you still have to choose where you're supposed to go. And as long as you keep choosing wrong, it's kind of like a, it's like a choose your own adventure book where like the cycle just restarts and that opportunity is going to present itself to you again in one form or another. You just have to, choose the right path the second time or the third time or the fourth time. But ultimately you're, there's still a trajectory for you that you're supposed to be on. Loved the exchange where Clementine, um, it's one of the memories where Clementine is asking Joel or saying to Joel, Hey, I'd really like to be a mom. And Joel's like, Oh, are you sure you'd like to be a mom? And she just goes ape shit on him in public. And, uh, I love that. Not that, you know, I, I, I gather these are probably not conversations for on the street in public, but the point stands If you're in a relationship with a person and you've been together for, I don't know, years, potentially they had been at that time, whatever, months, years, whatever it was, and you have a conversation about parenthood and you're not on the same page, yeah, you that is a a very bad, potentially crisis moment. Like, what are you doing? This is not a two two years in conversation. This is a date one conversation. So I appreciated that. (laughs) I also appreciated Clementine when she leaves him, even though the whole thing is really her fault for drunk driving, but she leaves him and he's trying to get her back. Get out of my face, faggot. (laughs) (laughs) I just cracked up. Just entertaining. Okay. I just thought it was funny. Uh, And and lastly, um, and I'll get into this with the characters I hate. There is nobody you can trust to manage your life better than you. Mm Mm-hmm. To the first point, even if we could erase memories, bad memories with precision, is there anybody you could trust to do it? You know, we trust doctors to fix our our bodies and our brains and other contexts, but to allow someone the authority to manipulate your mind itself, your very thoughts themselves or your memories, not really for any medical reason, but just because you find them uncomfortable, that requires an inhuman level of perfection, which I think is a critical point in the movie. We think that these so-called professionals are going to fix everything unpleasant about life for us. No, they're not. They're going to, they're going to knock you out and they're going to do weird degenerate high dancing all over your unconscious body. And they're going to have like weird workplace sex or whatever's going on. It's going to be, yeah. they're going to do, they're all degenerates. They're not trustworthy. You should be extra. You should have very high scrutiny for who you allow to do things like a knee surgery or I don't know, whatever other medical procedure that doesn't involve your mind. If you allowed someone the authority to manipulate your brain itself, there's no person you could trust to do it. That person just doesn't exist. Mm. All right. Things I didn't necessarily like too much. It is a little bit fart sniffy, a little bit indulgent in some artsy nonsense. You got like Joel's diary and his narration. It's like, okay, dude, I get it. Like, it was so sad. And like it had to have the the Jim Carrey acting bits, you know? Yeah. So that... Uh, there's a little bit of distraction there, a little bit of lost focus, but I can forgive it because it is a movie about losing focus in a way. Um, you know how I feel about nonlinear timelines. And I thought that this kind of yeah. did that in part. I didn't, I really don't like how it starts with them meeting again. I was confused by that rewatching it because I thought, what the, I thought that's how they met. And it's so weird and awkward. 
in a way that you can really only appreciate once you've seen the context of their relationship prior, but then you don't see the full exchange of the second meeting until after you've seen all the context behind it. So it doesn't really work. Plus this movie already has uh, nonlinear, a nonlinear timeline by necessity. Like it makes sense that you're going to go back through Joel's memories to erase them in order of recency. Like we'll start with the breakup. Yeah. We'll go through all the things you did and then we'll end at the time that you met her. And that's sort of a reverse timeline by necessity, by the design of the story. But then they kind of rearrange the timeline unnecessarily. I didn't think that was very effective. I, I would not organize the movie that way, even though I like the movie overall quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I hate the characters. Mar the, I, well, and I guess probably the actors too, but Mark Ruffalo, Kirsten Dunst, yeah. Elijah Wood. I hate every single one of these characters, though I know that I'm supposed to, so I'm allowing it. But Ruffalo's character, Stan, douchebag who doesn't take his very serious job seriously, seriously at all. Seriously at all. Yeah. And he's banging this chick from work who, if I understand, he erased her memory, or at least that's strongly implied, and doesn't tell her about it. He says he did not. He was on both. It seems like he did. Maybe he's telling the truth. I don't know. She you was got, way hot, though. She, she must have been 18. I don't know. She's got some chiclet teeth. <laughs> come on but mary 18 year old kirsten dunst can we agree on nothing too chiclety uh mary dunst character dunst's kirsten dunst's character slutty druggy homewrecker habitually and and probably uh, patrick elijah wood's character probably the worst steal maybe eclipsed only by stan who's like his boss guy who allows him to steal panties from the girlfriends of the clients and doesn't view that as a job ending development, but just his mating strategy of, I will map myself onto the memories of other men. He's like one step away from putting on a, another guy's skin suit to get laid. So I, I just, I, Elijah Wood, I know I'm supposed to hate that character. That that's why I sort of, this is kind of partially praise. It's like when a movie wants me to hate someone and I do, that's a good job actually. Yeah. Man, I couldn't stand any of them. And then actually this infidelity subplot with, with Mary didn't make a lot of sense to me. So we learned Why? that we learned that Mary, the assistant or the, the secretary at the office had an affair with her boss, Dr. Howard, but then she had the memory erasing procedure afterward. And then she goes on to deliver all the records <laughs> to the people who also had the procedure. And this point that they had an affair gets revealed when she throws herself at Howard and Howard's wife arrives and sees them in action through the window. Mm -hmm. At least two problems with that though. Um, if this affair happened before and uh, it's, this is not the first time it happened, Howard then goes out and defends himself to his wife on the street saying, this is a one time mistake. And you think, well, maybe his wife didn't know about the first affair. Well, no, his wife responds to her in the exchange. Oh, you haven't. You haven't told her, honey, you can have him. You did. So Howard's one time defense doesn't make sense because his wife is already aware of the first time. The first time. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. But I think more importantly, if Mary had a prior affair with Howard and had her memory erased, how does she possibly still work at the clinic? Because when Joel agrees to undergo the memory erasing Howard instructs him, hey, the first thing you got to do, you got to go, you got to go home. You got to collect and remove any item associated with Clementine. So as not to remind yourself upon awakening from the procedure. And, and we see them giving away those cards that the people who have had their memories erased are supposed to give to their friends and their families, instructing those people not to mention the forgotten person. So as not to reawaken the memories. Well, if people who have had memories erased can't see items associated with the forgotten person or aren't supposed to hear even discussion of that person, how is it possible that Mary still works at the clinic with the forgotten person himself, Howard, but never oh, yeah. has her memory reactivated? And the explanation, I think, is that she's just a uniquely dumb slut, which uh, is a point that I will take. Well, I think it was mostly that they didn't need to, they didn't want to know that they had their memory uh their memory taken hmm. right it wasn't like the memory was going to be jogged uh, i don't know that that whole even though i think it's cool that it ended up leading joel and clementine to get their tapes and to have that moment of reconciliation overall it serves an important point in the plot just the specifics of it just don't make sense and aren't consistent with the rest of the procedure for other people but overall 
Uh, I am fascinated with this movie. It really held up to me. So I, too, gave it a five wiki rating. We love you. You're very special. I think it's a highly memorable, big concept movie that reminds us of important lessons. So it held up for me. And at the start, I was a little worried. I thought, ah, crap. This looks like some artsy douchebag stuff I would have liked in college, but now I hate. Now it it uh, it delivered. Yeah. But I had forgotten all about like the Mary side plot and the Elijah Wood character. That was that was like fresh to me. I had no memory of that whatsoever. So. Right. Good. Anyway, uh, as far as the uh, the audience reaction, uh, early vote. Uh, let's see. Uh, people love this movie. Yeah. Uh, over a third of uh, early responders giving it a five, another quarter giving it a four. Although there is some hate. We got about 20% of early voters giving it a one, which, um, you know, I, I would like to hear someone rip this movie apart because as, as I just talked about at length, there are some things that are kind of like that I could see really pissing somebody off. That yeah. Are, are not irritating enough to me to undo what is a high, the high value of this movie. But I, I think, I think there's, if you really wanted to rip it, you probably could. Um, next week, it, the vote was rejected again. So this is another random selection from IMDb's top 250 list. Uh, the Sixth Sense. Have you seen that one? What? Before? Yeah, I, it's been a while. I've never seen it. So I should uh, I should understand what seeing dead people is all about because I have no idea. Uh, after that, uh, we the December's nominations from listener Steven are, they're not getting kind treatment, but they are still eligible for two weeks. So if any of these movies uh, sound good to you, you need to get in there and vote before they're gone. They are The Quick and the Dead, Death Becomes Her, The Long Kiss Goodnight, Species, The Craft, Barb Wire, To Die For, Return of the Living Dead 3, or if all of those movies sound like crap, you need to get in there and vote once again for Wild Card uh, oh, and reject the list entirely and vote for a randomly selected top rated movie instead. Now, this is one of those cases. And I don't mean to, you know, Steven likes what he likes. So, you know, and if the audience doesn't like it, that's fine. But this is one of those rare cases where a list has been um, wild carded multiple times. And so I've had people make a request. You should change this. Like if the list gets rejected on vote one, you should eliminate like half the list or eliminate the bottom vote getter or something. I don't know. I mean, there are potential rule changes for how we could handle such a situation, but it's so uncommon that I'm just going to kind of let this one ride. If, if it happened again, maybe I would think about that, but for now I'm just going okay. to uh, ride it through. And, uh, but we do have five Sundays in December. So we got to, we're going to have a fifth Sunday. We got to figure something else out. I don't know if we want to do like a classic Christmas movie or if you want another crack, the, the voters always reject your nominations by a, as a rule though, by default, it's I like, know, a meme it's not itself. even worth it. So or maybe we give blonde the no wild card vote where you have to vote for one of the movies that she nominates. <sighs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. But as a reminder, if you'd like to read my movie reviews, comment how wrong I am, submit your own rating, vote for the next movie and sign up for the chance to be the movie nominator for the month. The one and only place to do it is in my weekly movie review column linked in the description and on the homepage of the website. That is Matt Christensen Media dot com or of course you can use mad is dot gay if you prefer efficiency that's a big game man and uh we'll catch up with our chats and we'll call it a night uh hey. over on rumble hillbilly deluxe i think is where i left off um if what you say about the iranian agents is true imagine what could happen if biden incites uh, iran too much Election season suit and DNC wants Biden out of the way. Oops, let me get the foil right quick. Well, wait, now now I'm, this is layered, so I got to follow the logic here. Okay. Oh, okay. So if the premise is that we have Iranian agents in our State Department and Defense Department, which is true, imagine what could happen if Biden incites Iran too much, as in Iran gets pissed at Biden and deploys their agents within his administration to uh, handle business. Election season two, uh, election season is soon. DNC also wants Biden out of the way. Let me get the tin foil really quick. So we're going to have like a an inside Iranian job in the White House to take out Biden. Well, that, that's not an insane 2024 prediction as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this next one is definitely selected. Uh, 
Jussie ain't going to be suicidal once he gets served a foot long by Jared at 2 a.m. That's by... <laughs> Laser 47. Let me note that one. <laughs> you would think that would make you suicidal if you got served yeah. Jared's foot long at two in the morning. Uh, but uh, I suppose Jesse is inclined to appreciate that sort of thing. To your point, M- uh, manic idiot using a super chat to tell someone to give up a due to tangential association is like throwing money in a street musician's guitar case and telling them to stop because a guy nearby is playing a kazoo. Uh, yeah, I would say that I would say that's pretty fair. Um, you know, as I mentioned, like choosing how to manage negativity or choosing how to interact with negativity is something I should probably put some more thought to. And I know that I, I went kind of harsh on, uh, on John earlier. Um, but to give him as much credit as I can, you know, whenever people are critical of the move or want me to give up on the move or do whatever, There is um, a compliment in there and there is positivity in there insofar as that's someone who who places value on my material. And in his opinion, he thinks that I'm undervaluing it by placing it with this opportunity, which, you know, you're you're entitled to think that I just I have to dispute the advice to quit. I mean, like. uh, And just it's it's loser mentality stuff, like I said, but to your point, uh, Manic. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, your, your point is critical as well. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, um, to give the point as much credit as possible in, in the interest of fairness, since I was strongly critical of it myself, but thank you, manic idiot. Appreciate it. Uh, Gazuntite blonde says addicted to drums. Did you sneeze earlier? I didn't even catch it. Yeah, I did. All right. And paid myself a little bit. This has been rough. <laughs> that was the other <laughs> My wife's going to be mad about medical information, but when you're that pregnant and you have a cough that severe, uh, the just cough just, yourself just, cough just makes you pee your pants. Yes. Yeah. Just pee my, pee my pants at the grocery store. No matter where I am, I had to wash all the cushions on my couch. <laughs> and I kept thinking That's like... That's disgusting. It's disgusting, yeah. And I kept thinking, is, did my water break? Is that what happened? Or is hmm. it like pee? It's just, this is a nightmare. What China virus is this? Do you think we have the white lung pneumonia? I don't know, but this is one of the most persistent sicknesses I have had in some time. So bad. Yeah. Uh, I am all finished up on uh, rumble. Odyssey looks good. D live looks good. So we'll head on over to tippy and YouTube. Oh, good. Um, let's see. Das pooch. Happy ho, ho, ho season to both of you and your family. Sorry. You're afflicted by some heinous new gift from Papa Nurgle and the plague Lord. Pop a nerd. Don't deny it all you want. You're still foxy AF. I can and will deny it. I just talked about how I beat myself. <laughs> Wait, what is Papa Nurgle? No, I, I don't know. I don't get uh, it. I yeah, I don't know. This is some kind of villain in uh I don't know. And, and Nurgle Warhammer is the reference. is the name given to the malevolent and demonic deity of decay and despair in Warhammer fantasy. Uh, I don't know. That one's over my head. Yep. King David hotel bombing. So knuckle hunky buck is getting that greenhouse deal. He, yep. well, he, he does have a lot of clever chats, but I, I promise you he it does. is not rig rigged on uh, hunky bucks behalf. It's and fair. I'm looking at the roster right now of the five selections. Hunky buck is not entered. Oh, no. so, but he did just say, Matt, here's $10. Give up your dreams or I want a refund check. Me. And I think <laughs> that's worthy. <laughs> Uh, Where are they? Uh, well, hunky, okay. Hunky Buck is going to be a, a difficult one to navigate because mm-hmm. Hunky Buck is is very clever and he's a frequent chatter, but I also don't want the appearance of Hunky Buck favoritism, favoritism and rigging. Oh, come on. Because it's not fortified for Hunky Buck. Give it to me. No, I'm going to withhold this time because I know Hunky Buck. I want Hunky... Now this to is going to sound like I'm ripping game. him. Hunky Buck's A plus is like, Top, top we're tier. grading on a curve i guess hunky buck has to okay. bring the hunky buckiest okay, or else right. uh it's not getting in ryan spratt this is the first show my fiance and i are watching together can't wait to explain matt and i once made oh uh, god oh geez uh it's a long story you want to do it now i'd love to do it right now episode number 69 fittingly is the origin don't forget Phil Musk coming from his struggle session in israel to tell the jews running these corporations who have fucked themselves is pretty epic they're mad now probably try to break them but we're all watching make a list check it twice 
He did. That. Was that the order of things? Jeez. Um, did, did he go to Israel first? Well, he went to Israel to visit the one of the sites of the attack on October 7th. Uh, okay, yeah. so it must be. Yeah, it must be. Tortuga. Matt, why don't you start a new channel with a million views on every video? Really missed the boat there, didn't you? Uh, thank you for noting the sarcasm. And uh, it is laid on so thick that I, I would have been able to detect it even through the text. You're right. No. Um, thank you. And uh, I feel like I've already said everything I can say on that point. So. <laughs> Uh, very few things worthwhile are built overnight. And, uh, I would consider this project to be the same thing. And you know what? Like if it all sucks and it all be like a year from now, half a year from now, whatever you look at it and it's like a colossal failure, it doesn't work. Okay. I mean, you know, I tried. And one thing I've learned in life, I know it sounds cliche, but sometimes cliche things are true. Um, if, if I'd had the, the conversation that I had with Lauren Chen, about this opportunity and decided no for all the reasons that I think critics of it would advocate. And again, some of those points I can understand, I think are, are valid. Uh, I would have sat back and known that I could have been a part of a project and let's say in an alternative universe, this does very well and succeeds. And I would have known that I could have had that opportunity and I declined for reasons X, Y, and Z that would have bothered me so much more than giving it a chance and having it not work out. Yeah. So yeah. given the potential for failure on either side, I will certainly choose the risk that I took. It, it, you always regret things you said no to rather than things that you said yes to. And there's no circumstance in which like, oh no, this doesn't work out. Okay, I go back to square one and I go, you know, work out of the, I work in the same situation I was working from before. And I go to my weird YouTube channel that exists in a box by Susan and Raja Mahan's design. And I try to break out of the box and we'll do that. And that's fine. I will carry on. But, but man, it's like when you think about potential opportunities to get you out of that box, if they not this, far between. if not and this, what? then what, what yeah. exactly am I waiting for? Um, and I don't have a good answer for that. So even if it doesn't work out, no regrets as the tattoo says, no regrets about, taking opportunity where it presents itself. Yep. Um, I need to cough. Can I? Can I yeah. Phil, uh, we got Phil's Jonathan Prezio says people don't realize this Elon Musk, uh, thing was planned just like Trump. He knows how to advertise himself. He did this because the cyber truck is finally rolling out. He wants people to talk about Elon and his business ventures. F you Disney. Yeah, maybe, I guess I don't know what's going on with Tesla, but they did talk quite a lot about Tesla when he said, um, I, I can't stand these people who care about the appearance of good while doing evil. One of the things he said beforehand was, Hey, Tesla has probably done more for the environment as a company than any company in the history of the earth. Therefore I, as the guy running Tesla have probably done more for the environment than really anybody. And yet I'm viewed as the bad guy by the people who are supposed environmental activists or something. Uh, so maybe there is some, um, like some kind of Tesla promotional angle. I don't know. But, uh, Thank you, Jonathan. Jay says, Matt, I think your channel is the perfect platform for me to advertise on. Now change everything about your channel. <laughs> um, well, um, I assume that's that's a joke there. But if you, you know, as always, if you're a friendly listener owned business and you would like to talk advertising opportunities, you can always send me an email. But uh, if the email comes with change everything about your channel, then I will give you the Elon Musk Actually, I didn't save that sounder. That was bad show prep for me. I should have saved the Elon Musk sounder. Go fuck yourself. That was a missed opportunity. Dancing Israeli says, in regards to the monkey typewriter question, there is not an infinite number of things they could type. Shakespeare typed approximately 6 million letters, so it's just a lottery ticket 6 million long with infinite tries. Right. I suppose that's a something of a slight distinction. Um... The point that you're making is the end product is not infinite in nature. The complete works of Shakespeare, only the opportunity to create it is. And I don't know what your perspective is on it, Mr. Dancing Israeli, and what conclusion you come to. But yeah, to me, whenever there's infinite opportunity for something to happen that is theoretically possible, I will take infinity chances for it to happen. Chris of the J says, just released a podcast yesterday. It's AI voice acted indie pulp stories with added music effects and sound effects search for the ai drama files on apple 
Google and Spotify also been enjoying the Matt Christensen hour. Well, thank you for checking it out. That is the Wednesday production over on tenant. And, um, that's been fun. We, um, as promised, I did talk to, uh, that army green beret who was uh, forced out of the army for the vaccine mandate. And that was a really good conversation. I'm, I was, I was happy to have him as my first guest for that show. So you so, can go, uh, listen. yeah, it's, he's a really good dude. Um, and it, it's, it's, he's really interesting to talk to because this is a guy who, when you think about who you want in the army to protect you, if you need that sort of thing, this is that guy like sharp, uh, obviously very physically prepared. I think he did every army training program except for dive school. Essentially. Yeah. Um, this is a guy who devoted his life to, to high level army performance and because he wouldn't take the jab, not just because he had skepticism of the jab, but because he's a devoted Catholic who is opposed to the use of aborted fetal cells in the development of the vaccine. Even for that reason, they're going to kick him yeah. out. And it's like, what, what are we doing? Booting what guys doing? of this yeah. character level and this ability level out. What insanity is this? Why? Like, uh, it. uh, it's one of those conversations that I thought was great for all the wrong reasons, you know, but sometimes those are really worthwhile. And so it was, uh, it was, it was my pleasure to meet him and I hope uh, we can talk some more in the future. No. What was that? Was that actually just a, a throat clearing or were you trying to make a joke? Oh no, it's uh, uh, this virus. Is just oh, I thought it was a blonde thing. Like, Oh, that guy sucked. Oh, what? that no. show sucks. No, no, no. <laughs> No, uh, no, 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 for real. Fractal Insights. Most likely Santos was on Gorlack, the Destroyer's OnlyFans. Now, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm sure it is probably uh, grotesque. That's disgusting. But I'm going to... <laughs> okay. Gorlack, the Destroyer, was a name given to blogger Ali C. Oh, this is some girl from the, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the huge obese girl on the whatever podcast. Remember her? Have you seen that, that whale of a woman? Oh, uh, you're muted. No, I'm not. Oh, you just muted. It just got muted randomly. Oh. The, the tranny looking one. There was a huge fat chick on the whatever podcast back in the spring. Oh, okay. I can send you her picture here. I guarantee you, you've seen this girl. And I guess she's been given the nickname Gorlock the Destroyer. But does she actually have an OnlyFans? Is that, I wonder if that's Gross. true. I'm not going to look it up to verify. Ryan Sikora says, I'm the black sheep in my family. 2020 made a lot of family members not like my political beliefs. Do you have any advice for people that want to hold beliefs, but also be a good family member by not making everything political? It's tough for me to say. Well, it's first of all, tranny. Yeah. that person is a tranny. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. It's it's one of those people that's so obese it's hard to tell. But first of all, Ryan, I am thank not going to be niggardly. Um, they, when I address this sort of question, at least when it comes to family, I speak purely in theory because my family has actually been really great about this, and I'm I'm very thankful for that because if I had family members turning on me over Corona bullshit or other you know political mm -hmm. matters, it would really bother me. Um, I, if I had family members that were like total opposite of the Corona worldview or just total opposite in politics and viewed that as an obstacle. I mean, I, I would just be completely honest and I would try to have a conversation about priorities and about proper order in the hierarchy here. And, and I would right. say something to the effect of, I believe what I believe. And I think I believe those things for valid and true and important reasons. I also acknowledge that for reasons X, Y, and Z, uh, family integrity is a crucially important value. Family has to stay together for every individual in that family unit to survive and thrive and for society in general to prosper as well. So pursuant to that, I'm willing to offer a long leash and a lot of forgiveness to my family members. You don't have to believe politics A, B, or C. I might even be able to forgive low level crimes, D, E, and F. I don't know. Blonde <laughs> might let them bury a body. Blonde might help them bury a body. But I would make that sort of uh, gesture and say, it is not a requirement for me to believe things to be my family member because you are my family member. And that relationship is so important that it has to transcend things like political opinions. Yeah. I hope that you will meet me there. And I hope that we could just have some kind of peace agreement that like, Hey, politics aren't our thing, but you want to talk about football. You want to talk about movies. You want to talk about whatever. I'll agree to that. If the person is not willing to meet, if a family member is not willing to meet you, on that basis, 
you did what you could. I mean, you, yeah. a family member can't ask you to change your worldview to maintain a family relationship with that person. That's just, that's an unrealistic and unfair ask. So that's how I would go about it. And I hope they would say, yeah, makes sense. Family integrity is important and I'll meet you there. If they don't, well, give them the old Elon Musk or the uh, Kate Winslet in Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, really. You have anything you want to say about that one? No, I'm just trying not to cough. I've got this like, I can just tell I'm about to have a coughing fit. And possibly give birth and possibly pee your pants. It's just, I hate this song. You're going to cough and a baby's going to fall out any second. Uh, Scooby Juby Jew, <laughs> but it's J-O-O. Just bought a garden tower. Sorry, that's not funny, but how many tickles does it take to make an octopus smile? Ten tickles. Okay. I know that this, I know that that's, I know that's not a good joke, but I like dad jokes and, um, <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. And I'm going to reward that. I don't know, uh, if, uh, I don't know if it's true that you're saying you actually did buy one of the hydroponics kits, but, uh, if so, maybe you're eligible to give one away this Christmas to a friend or family member. Cause I'm entering that one. Uh, let me continue here. Thank you. Scooby Juby. Mike Hawk 420 Blazin. This degenerate shit is destroying everything. Having a Republican cross dressing uh, gay guy is a sign of how far we've gotten. But if you figure out the cause of this is um, uh, <laughs> people he doesn't like, then you're the <laughs> asshole. Um, yeah, I mean, it, there is something to be said. It's like, I mean, what, what are conservative values too? It's like, uh, I've long understood conservative values not to be like only fans, homosexuality. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if that's the win, like, Oh man, we have to keep him in Congress to make sure that like he votes for a slight tax cut or something. I mean, I think to the point of the chat, maybe you get the, uh, the fiscal win there in the moment, but we are still, uh, on a trajectory of cultural decline. And um, I don't know, whatever path George Santos is taking, I will take a different path. I, where he turns right, I turn left, whatever. I don't mean that politically. I just mean like that guy's not a guy I'm following into any situation ever. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Moist farts. Matt, who would win in a fight? Fetterman's lump or blonde's nose? <laughs> My money's on blonde's monstrous nose. Since I have it For on sure. good authority, yeah. it killed the leopard blonde is wearing tonight. It's all these things are true. Love I would bet on my nose too. You his said, his oh. lump is bigger though. Oh my God, that is funny. I, I, maybe I hit that prematurely. That sounded like a selection to me, but do you think he's, uh, you think he deserves one for that one or is it he, too harsh? He gets it. Yeah, no, he gets a, you suck. Fuck you too. Okay. You suck. Fuck you. I, um, do not think I'm going to be able to finish the show. Uh, we're probably, I think we're close to the, 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 uh, end of chats here. Are we not? I'm just going to have to mute it the whole time and cough. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, totally fine. I think we're about done. I mean, if you have to sign off, that's also fine. I'm not trying to, not trying to stop you. I'm just saying, I think we're about finished up here. Let me, uh, properly save this chat from moist farts. Thank you for bearing with my oh, clerical right. okay. tasks here. Um, yeah. We had moist farts. I think I might have a couple on uh, a couple over on Rumble. Let me read through these yes. here. Uh, well, wait. Hold on. No, no, there are there are quite a few more. So totally up to you. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I need to go cough and pee, and then cough and pee. Please. Understandable. I will read through the I'm chats. So sorry. Although you're granting me full authority to decide who's eligible for the hydroponics kit win. You can't. All right. Oh God, this is so miserable. Okay. All well, right. we'll see you next week unless one of us goes into labor. It could be any time. Uh, Godspeed. Hopefully we are both in better <laughs> condition next week, specifically you. Cause it sounds like you're sicker than I am. Okay. All right. I good night. See ya. Um, let me hold on. Let me bring back this one. Sorry. Got to bring up the technical difficulties placeholder. Forgot about that. Martin Chamberlain. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel Lopez. Whatever happened to Andy? Anyway, well, uh, first of all, thanks for your, your chat. Appreciate that. I don't know which we Andy you. you're talking about. You're very special. I would need a clarification on the Andy. 
Because there's no Andy necessarily associated with this show. But what Andy are we referring to? Floyd McGurkin, he's back again. All right, she sent me a text, so here I go. Matt and I once made love. His thrombosis isn't the only thing that was deep and veiny. Are you happy now, Robin? Did I do it right this time? Okay, well, that one I think is... uh, Deep vein thrombosis, DVT. I think it's pursuant to the theme. So, you know, Floyd, I'm I'm going to give you... Oh my God, that is funny! I'm going to give you an entry as well. Thank you, Floyd. Appreciate it. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Adox says, Blonde, I've been watching you for years. Thank you for your negative and angry attitude. My northern Idaho soul feels included. Matt, keep it up, my man. I'm sorry that Blonde uh, did not get that message in the moment. But uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Skype it to her right now just so she has it. Super chat message for you from Adox. I just wanted to have that message. Uh, thanks, Adox. Appreciate it. Matt and I once ate out. He uh, he's had the tossed salad, and I took a side of pink eye home for the family. All right. Uh, okay. That's disgusting. I, this is now. I've, I'm going to have to come up with rules. Like, how do I select and how do I not select? Um. I don't know. This is going to be somewhat arbitrary. So I apologize for that. Probably should have thought through the system a little bit better. Thank you, Kadri. Vanessa Stoller says, Matt and John once thought about making love, but John got upset because Matt refused to pull out because of his tenant. Um, That's true. I do have a a, a commitment to tenant by tenant. You're right. Thank you, Vanessa. Stephen Matthews says, uh, Hey blonde, a while back you asked for a TV series to get into. I highly recommend Mr. In between awesome Aussie show. Titular titular. That's a weird word. I don't know how to say that one, but uh, the character is in between being a hitman, but he's also a great dad, etc. Well, um, I know that blonde isn't here to read the, or to hear these. So Steven, I'm going to send that one along for you too, just so she doesn't miss these. And so she has them for reference. Uh, And thanks for your patience with that. Gorgeous mayhem. I got to say, what's up with all these smooth brains who keep on going after Matt for trying to build something new with Tenet? Hey, I got something for you losers. Eat Fetterman's lump. Go Tenet. Well, thank you for the encouragement, man. I very much appreciate it. And um, and I think you're exactly right on the theme. Like, you know, you, you try to build things. Sometimes what you try to build doesn't work out. Sometimes it becomes awesome. But... As a general rule, life rewards those who try to build. Life does not reward those who sit around and quit every time something gets a little bit hard or every time something something doesn't turn out exactly the way that you wanted it or expected it. And when I say that, I don't even mean to say that I view Tenet that way. I don't necessarily. I mean, even though there are a lot of people on this project who have big audiences on a wide variety of platforms, just because you ask people to go over and, and subscribe to something or go watch something doesn't necessarily mean that they do. You know, I'm tremendously grateful that my for my audience and what I've built over the last few years. And I would love it if people would come over and watch my stuff over there. But just because I ask them to doesn't mean that they will. And of course, I have enough respect for them to say that, like, I can't hold you at gunpoint and force you to go over there. If you've decided for reasons that are entirely your own that you won't watch it, then you won't. And that's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, my expectations, even though there are obviously big players on this project, whenever you're starting a channel from zero, that's not easy to do, especially in today's YouTube environment. So, I mean, even when I had conversations about this project in the early on, when, when it was told to me, no, the the plan is not to convert an existing channel into this. The plan is to start from scratch. It's like big play, big gamble might work, might not, but you know, I, It's not easy for even the biggest people on YouTube to say, hey, I'm starting a new YouTube channel tomorrow. It's over here. Go sign up for it. I mean, how many people are capable of producing 100,000, 200,000, whatever? How many hundreds of thousands of subscription channel overnight? Very few people. So you continue to work on the project and I'm going to keep putting uh, as much of my effort into it as I possibly can. And if it, if it sucks in the end, then I'll find a new place to put my uh, effort. But I thank you very much, Mr. Mayhem for the encouragement and for your attitude. And of course, for supporting the show, Ogan Maddox says, please use a more, uh, the more politically correct African American Friday in the future. Great show as always. 
I will do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say Black Friday. It's Friday of color. You're right. Uh, Mike Hawk also says, wow. Um, other group that he is not fond of being too retarded to comp- to com- to confidently commit insurance fraud. I am. I am shocked. Well, I it's one of the higher efforts I've seen. You know, I'm I'm shocked that it was not successful. No, but, uh, you know, more than um, more than most. Thank you, Mike. More effort than most, I should say. Knuckle Hunky Buck, of course, did the bathroom stall with the TP swastika have a wooden door? I don't know. But there's a joke there. There's a hunky buck there that I don't, it's over my head. I don't know what, I know there's a joke there and I don't know what it is. It's lost on me, hunky buck. I apologize. Uh, thank you. Uh, Stephen Matthew says, love blonde smile and or laugh whenever Matt's segment intros play. I forget which we did. Uh, I will remember you tonight. Um, that was really the only bit, I think. But uh, I'm glad that you enjoy her her cackling uh, over, over whatever the gag might be. I see 904 finally ordered some hero soap to try. Matt and I once made love. We tingled each other's balls in the shower until we oat an almond and our timber lines shook. Please, P.S. Please ask them to make a loofah. Uh, I think they did way back in the day. Um, obviously, if you've looked on the website and it's not there anymore, I guess it's not it's not currently there. That's a big game, man. But I believe Hero is fairly responsive. I think you can contact them through their website. So if you would like to see that happen, uh, you should ask them about it and they might be willing to do that. But hey, uh, thanks for checking out the soap, too. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. Fractal Insight says Pastor Dean O. Odell and Pastor Greg Locke had an amazing debate last night about biblical cosmology and the shape of the earth. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Interesting. Uh, I don't know either of those names, so I'll have to check it out. Uh, Knuckle Hunky Buck says, oh, this was the one earlier. Here's 10 bucks. Give up your dreams or I want a refund. Checkmate. Thank you, Hunky Buck. Uh, I will consider this proposition. Uh, Esoteric Unbound says Matt calls children as a, a date one conversation. Matt would uh, many would call that foolish, but uh, I said I needed at least three over a pizza prior to any date. She went on the first date anyway. Got three kids. Miss her. Yeah, I, I um, you know, again, uh, our condolences, uh, Esoteric, on the on the loss, and hope you're doing well, man. Um, perhaps a little bit of clarification from me would have been helpful. Like when I say that kids are a date one conversation, I don't mean kids with that person. Like you tell the person I'm going to have kids with you. What I mean is the question of what are your thoughts on children? What are your thoughts on family? If the answer is don't want them, you should be out. You should be out because if you're not shopping for a spouse based on the prospect of finding a husband or wife for the purpose of building a family in general, you're doing it wrong. Now, I know that there are exceptions and some people who can't have kids, don't want kids for some obscure reason, all of that. But if you're the sort of person who is searching for a spouse for the reason that 99% of people are, which is to build a family, you need to know on day one of that consideration that your prospective spouse, the whole reason you're meeting this person, is in on the idea of building family. And if they're not, you shouldn't be wasting your time. So it's definitely not like a, Hey, I'm having kids with you. Are you in or out on this? I mean, you don't need to be that forceful. It's more like, what are your thoughts on family? What are your goals on family? What's your vision for family in the future? And if the answer is don't care, don't want that. Thank you for your time. That, that is the wise approach in my opinion. But, uh, you know, my opinion is based on wasting my time and not taking a leadership role with women several times until I went the direct route in the way that I described and it worked out great. Uh, Mike Hawk, 420 Blazin. Uh, this one I can't even read. It's just, he, he wants bad things to happen to, uh, to, um, to particular groups of people. And, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say other than, um, than I guess the, the Sidious line. Good. Let the hate flow through you. Knuckle Hunky Buck also says, Blonde's nose may have killed a leopard, but Fetty's lump killed half his brain well hunky buck (laughs) oh my god that is funny you knew you were gonna find your way in one way or another and you know who who could i who would i be to deny hunky buck eligibility based on 
all his support for the show and all his um all his comedy of uh of course this stream but streams past of course hunky buck deserves an entry and thanks for supporting the show man uh i think we're all set here on Streamlabs. uh stream i'm banned on Streamlabs. my brain is fried like fetterman uh tippy stream and youtube got a couple on uh on rumble here uh Oh, we just have uh, Skunk's Cat uh, signing up to be a monthly supporter. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. We're good on Odyssey. Um, we're good on DLive. Okay. Uh, so that means we are all set for the stream. Let me uh, reset, uh, refresh the uh, the chat feed here, and it looks good. So we will call it a night. But hey, um, thanks for hanging out with us tonight, as always. And thanks for making the live show a success. I uh, appreciate everyone's chats and I appreciate the uh, the interest in this new giveaway bit. I think it's going to be really fun for the rest of the month. I look forward to the competition. And um, thank you guys for, for making that successful. And of course, thanks for all your thoughts on, you know, the news and, and everything that's going on with, uh, you know, my new career moves and, and all of those things. I appreciate it very much. If you're listening later on demand, thank you kindly as well for supporting the show. Hey, if you need more to listen to, there's lots more material, including my new Wednesday show. Uh, it's called the Matt Christensen Hour. You can find it over on my website, mattchristensenmedia.com, along with all the extra material, including the audio forms of the show. If you'd like to listen, uh, you can do that as well. But anything else show-related, check out the website, mattchristensenmedia.com or mattis.gay. We'll be back next Sunday, because if it's Sunday, sorry, Kristen Welker. It's not Meet the Press. It is the Matt and Blonde Show. Have a great night. Try